than than regular seasons. So um, I'm itching for some football right now, badly. <laughs> What's up, everybody? So, God, it's been a long time. It feels like it's been a long time. It's only been like, well, I guess it's been three weeks since the last broadcast I did on the channel because the last two weeks I've been traveling with work and stuff. But we are back talking about different things around the beer world, of course. So I'm here with John H. Pierre and Todd Wren. You guys can introduce yourself. Go ahead, John. Yes, my name is John Henderson Pierre, the Beer Ramble. I my name on YouTube, J-E-A-N-H, Pierre, P-E-R-R-E, and you'll see some of my videos, and I do share them uh, on the on many different beer groups on Facebook. And tonight, I am having Yingling Black and Tan, uh, so I'm sampling right now. And Mr. Red? And I am Todd Wren. I am in Sellersburg, Indiana, just uh, five miles, give or take, north of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I do not have any channels or pages of sorts at this point, but I do like to get on. And so, uh, and tonight I am drinking a Stone Ghost Hammer IPA. Nice. All right. And one day we'll have just just pick that one up. Just pick that one up about a week. Uh, last week, I guess it was. Cracked of it actually. One day we're gonna have you get a channel. It'll happen. <laughs> and, we had... you, okay. <laughs> and then we had Joe pop on here. What's up, Joe and Buffalo? How you doing, Joe? Yes, hello, good sirs. Hey, Joe. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Joe. I have no channel. This I hope to correct in the future, but probably not. <laughs> See, I thought you were going to say you're from Joe from Buffalo and going to a little rap song, but it didn't. No, there's happen. no listen. There's no rapping. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself. More so than I already do. <laughs> we had enough brute tubers that embarrass themselves. I think you'd be okay. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You're you're 100 accurate on that. And of course, coming in sideways, we got Paul who's trying to mess with his camera there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Can't hear. So no. you can't hear. We can hear you. Wish it was the other way around. <laughs> Come on, Dusty Rose, stop messing with it. Introduce yourself, baby. This you gotta calm the fuck down, baby. <laughs> I can't. I can't hear you through my headphones. I don't know why. Dusty Rose, you better settle down before Ric Flair come over there and suplex you, baby. Baby. Uh, <laughs> the good old days. Paul is out in PA. Can you hear me now? Can you hear now? You all right? You want to do your channel? No. You tell people Please. don't watch. Say people don't watch me though. Yeah, don't, don't watch, watch me though. For God's sake, <laughs> watch Joe's channel. It's more watch more mine. <laughs> I have absolutely zero videos, and it's more entertaining than Paul's channel. Thanks. You want to see Joe's beard that you don't show? Not all beards. <laughs> what are you drinking tonight, Joe? Um, I'm drinking a beer I picked up this past weekend. I did a little uh, day trip down to Elmira, New York. All right. And uh, there's this awesome brewery that I uh, actually mad at from Massive Beer Reviews mentioned there. Paul's favorite, uh, Pennsylvania Beer Reviewer. And he mentioned this place called the Farmhouse Brewery. And it's just little town, uh, Owego, New York. And it was like in the middle of nowhere. And they had awesome beer, like absolutely fantastic beer. I never heard of this place. So I brought back their uh, Belgian brown ale brewed with toasted coconut and coffee. And it is fucking You got to say coconut. Yeah, you know. toasted coconut. See, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a toasted coconut whore. So at that point, it was like, I don't even care if the beer shit. It has coconut in it. I'm bringing home a growler. That's how that works. <laughs> so I did, but it's awesome. It tastes like a Mounds Bar with coffee. It's just, it's it's not quite that desserty. Like it has... Mm some sweet notes to it, but it, it's bitter enough to balance it all out. It's, it's fantastic. Thoroughly enjoying it. Nice. Nice. What about you, Paul? What are you drinking? I, I just, uh, got drinking, uh, just got done drinking. A blast. <laughs> He's already a mess. I love it. <laughs> I got a case of it for 20 bucks. That's oh, a Brooklyn. great deal. Well, and that's a good, that's a good beer. September, well, the best, here's the best part is Pennsylvania fresh. 
So it's the oh, Best nice. Buy is September 2015. Uh, yeah. I was going to ask you because I remember seeing that beer a couple years ago. Now it all makes sense. I haven't seen it since. There you go. Ooh. And then I'm drinking the uh, the Blackbeard's Breakfast from the Beatles fan. Fucking fabulous. Well, yeah. I just, I just picked up a split case for $12.99 with the uh, 12 of the 72 cream or 71 mm -hmm. cream style from Breckenridge. Oh, my yeah. God. So how dare you, Rajay? They got bought out. How dare yeah, you? They got bought out. Are you, you're a shill of the fucking yeah. industry. Don't care. Yeah. I'll drink to their misery. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the other 12 are Upland. And you'll like this, Joe. It's, it's their new like coconut IPA they have. Oh, my God. I think I'm going to need a minute. I'm going to need a minute. <laughs> so I see your 20, and I drop it to 12 99 Oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many beers did you get for your 12 99 Twenty-four cold case, baby. Twenty-four. Oh my god! Just like you Kiefer Sutherland, twenty-four. Call me. Call me. <laughs> we uh, we actually get Upland here now, uh, Rod. We uh, oh, awesome. we we get their sours. A lot of their sours that they're known for. Okay. It's like I'm in the twilight zone. I didn't say that the devil. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there's there's some devilish shit going on right now. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Somebody brought in the exorcist with them. Uh, but that coconut. So so it's just a regular old IPA with brewed with coconut. And it's got coconut. Let me get the name of it here. I just had it the other day. I've had the first of the twelve. It was pretty tasty. Had that coconut. I take your hat back on. <laughs> it's called <laughs> latitude adjustment. Um, let me see here. And it is a pale ale, but it used toasted coconut in there. Oh my god! Uh, cream coconut. Um, you really get the coconut it's comes through, and you get like the the right citrus now. of the like the hops. I mean, it's it's kind of a unique type flavor, but you definitely get the coconut out of it. Right, you need to stop teasing me right now. <laughs> but if you see it, it's lat latitude. Full one inch right now. Latitude adjustment is the name of that one. Nice. I'll, I'll have, like I said, we get their sours, or we have been getting their sours over the last couple of months. I don't know if they're going to bring any of like their base stuff. I hope so, because it sounds like maybe a seasonal or you know a rotating release. Yeah. I'm down for it. Yeah, it uh, it definitely hit the spot nicely. Mm, yeah. One thing about Joe, everyone needs to know: his penis is shaped exactly like a butt plug. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't think they need to know that, but now that they do, it's very accurate. <laughs> hey, they, I, if I would have known it, I would have never told you to come down to my house. Now yeah, I, 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 it's it's like a nub. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, yeah. The, yeah well. the, the, the biggest question or concern there is, how do you know that, Paul? Oh, he knows a lot, a lot, a lot more than just that. Me? <laughs> Paul I have spent, <laughs> I've spent some uh, romantic nights down in the dungeon. We were by the fire. It was nice. So, also, uh, <laughs> welcome in the basement. And Craig kept beer reviews. They're actually commenting. Craig's actually in London, so he's not at home in front of his computer. Hey, Craig, go fuck yourself. <laughs> All has beef with all the uh, all the UK guys. That's yeah. not cool. It's not cool. Paul. It, it's, it's a love hate relationship. We're like an S and M. It's more like a hate and hate relationship. Yeah, we got hate. We got hate. It's kind of like you and I, Joe. In the basement. So that's all Joe's, love. In the basement, that Joe's beard is epic, and it is not. I look like a terrorist. Leave me alone. <laughs> right. now, don't don't sound like that. Don't sound like that. Because I did have a bigger beard than you, and when I looked in the mirror, yes, I did look like a terrorist, and I shaved it off. So well, you have long hair, so you just look like Jesus. There's a difference. You get, you get that Iranian in you, though. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I don't know. I don't I don't know if you were going to blow me up with explosives or you're going to fucking pray for me. I didn't. I was confused. Yeah, it was either, either going to like like blow you up or I looked like the the shroud of Turin. It was one of those two. <laughs> Pretty much. Might do both. Blow you up and then pray for you. Yeah. Pray for me and then blow yeah. me up. No, blow you up and pray that you go to hell. You <laughs> blow you up and feel guilty about it. <laughs> That's something Paul would do too. You guys know this. I shouldn't have done that. No, no. Um, Craig says anybody, anyone drinking malt liquor. So apparently last night on Ronald the Rose channel or the riot, as I call him, um, apparently there's malt liquor, uh, uh, Mount Rushmore, and apparently one of the cast of characters on there got a little crazy, so it was kind of entertaining for a point. Oh, we got booted, so everybody's cracking up watching that. And apparently, on the show, who's the wrestling dude on there? 
Yeah, <laughs> I don't know who that was either. <laughs> there, was, there was a wrestling dude on there. He was pissed at somebody. I don't know. He was just dropping f bombs. I think that's who got kicked off. I think that was the one. I think it was Eric's friend that was on there going crazy. That doesn't seem very civil. <laughs> I think he pulled a Tom, took his shirt off at one point. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, did you say someone took their shirt off? That's, I'm glad I missed it. I'll, so just, I'll first, just hear about the stories. The, the, the first 12 I minutes were the craziest part of it. Man, Teddy. Let me see here. Wow. He had a ski mask to bargain on. <laughs> But um, if you get a chance to check it out, again, that's uh, Ronald DeRose and the uh, Mount Rushmore. Mount Liquor, Mount Rushmore. Did now, they ever did come to a consensus? No, I think they were given their favorite Mount Liquors and then things got a little crazy. And like I said, he was running around with a shirt off or whatever. And you wonder why Mount Liquor gets a bad name and you kind of saw it there. <laughs> Uh, Did you see the, the 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 founders thing? The new founders thing. They're making a barrel aged bourbon barrel aged. Yeah, malt liquor. liquor. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward yeah. to totally yeah. drinking yeah. it in so under it's ten okay. minutes. So it's okay if you make if you drink it's okay if you drink a malt liquor from founders, but it's not okay if you drink a malt liquor from a hurricane. Well, this is barrel aged. So let's not get crazy. Oh, 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 <laughs> let's not get crazy. But, it's not just a malt liquor. I'm sorry, founders. Why do you want to tap this fucking jar on that? Because you're looking like a douche right now. A little bit of a douche right now. You, you know what's going to happen? The founders, founders is going to probably fucking dry hop the crap out of that beer. It's not even going to be a malt liquor anymore. Oh, no. It's not going to be a malt liquor. And everybody that buys it thinking, hey, I'm drinking a grab malt liquor. It's going to be like, who's talking? Like, oh, it's going to get a 97 for It's going to be, you know, like a 10 for style, 97 overall, because it's going to be over 10 fucking percent. Because great beer sucks. The end. Goodbye. So if it's owned by a, if it's owned by a macro, I mean, is it still malt liquor? Can it still use the title? Wait, if it's, <laughs> if it's not owned by a macro, can it use malt liquor? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the ball, and you just fucking dropped it. I mean, is it now macro malt liquor? That again, Founders has like what 15, 20, 30 percent owned by some freaking Spanish corporation conglomerate. Exactly. So nobody wants eh, to talk about that. Eh, hang on, I don't know. They're kind of macro. We don't know anymore. We just come <laughs> up. Anyway, all the guys that all the guys that drive to work drive in a mass produced car by a major corporation. And if you want to really get into it, we can get into it. <laughs> It's not, it's not any small car companies out there. No, there's no, no, they're not driving Teslas at work, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking beer, man. We're talking beer. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When it goes to that, what you put in your cup, that's what matters. <laughs> uh, even though they're wearing the clothes from Walmart and they driving fucking Toyotas and hot, you know, oh, never mind. Sorry. Paul, this is like a drunken ramble, but I don't think you're actually to that point yet. What I just started drinking. So, so if this was like if this was like coffee, right? If this was like coffee, you'd have all the people that were bitching probably about the macros and beer that probably line up to go to Starbucks and like Dunkin' Donuts, but they don't go to Papa Joe's coffee shop on the corner. No. <laughs> have you ever drank at Starbucks? Am I say drunken? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening, drunken one? How are you? Good, how you doing? Great. I like how you uh, invite people in. You don't you don't put the link that you, you have to kind of be gonna ask to get in, and then you send them a, a, an invite. I like that. I mean, yeah. I would. I only have like two viewers out there, so I'm sure we wouldn't run through that blue space. <laughs> well, I, I'm thinking you need to monitor this a little better. We got we got uh, PA brew brew reviews in here. <laughs> how, how do you let these things get out this way? <laughs> that fucker's like a little mouse. Uh, Any little bit of crack, he'll get in between. Uh, uh, I, I enjoy this company. I enjoy this company. He is uh, definitely off the hook. <laughs> well, we have we have John here too, but he got called away. Again by his wife, I believe. So there, there are oh, I say, I gotta do yeah technical difficulties on uh, Jean's side. Yeah, yeah, he oh. still forgets to mute him, so I had to meet him because he forgets to do it. AKA a- everything every day with Jean. Yeah. Everything every day. <laughs> John has headset on tonight, so he's prepared. Whoa! <laughs> he was prepared. You're right. You're right. And my headset doesn't work. Am I echoing at all? No, you're not echoing. Okay. One can only hope, but you're not no. Yeah, because it would actually be somewhat interesting. Yeah. Well, I'd like to hear. I'd like to hear you at least twice. 
Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Once I'll isn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> it really drives drives home the points that you make. <laughs> well, nobody's getting yelled at tonight. <laughs> Tom's not here tonight. And... I'm yelling at everybody right now. Here's the secret about Tom. When Tom's here, we get yelled at, but we can't hear him half the time, so I don't know. <laughs> And then Jay's not here either tonight. He might jump on. I'm not. He, he goes. To, he gets up early, like two forty-five early. So I don't know if he'll jump on or not. Those those five thirty a.m. beers. Those five thirty a.m. beers are not going to drink themselves. <laughs> well, I'm at work like in, it's like eight in the morning, and Jay pops up on my thing with notification. He's having like you know some two liquors battling it off that early in the morning. We have like, a really? family challenge tonight. I mean today. I mean this morning. I mean this. <laughs> what hour? <laughs> It's like, yeah, and, and messing those up later. How, how's that go? Is he actually drinking that shit that early in the yeah, morning? Yeah, I mean, live. I see him rolling up. He's live doing it at like eight in the morning or seven in the morning or six, whatever time. Oh, jeez. How, how long does that challenge last? <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a challenge unless he's challenging himself. Yeah, <laughs> 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 going with me. I'm gonna start doing that shit too. But I'll do it fucking live in my in uniform at work. Hi guys, fuck you, Jay. Here we go. We're gonna do a beer review because fuck this place. It's gonna be like one of those kind of challenge. Yeah, tasting challenges between yeah. uh, two liquors. He'll have two beers, and uh, I think most of them take place in the morning, the crack crack of dawn. Yeah, he likes to try to compare them to see what the differences are. And he says a lot of his viewers enjoy. That sounds the, like uh, a hell of a breakfast to me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, it's perfect. You know, so we got some bacon, some eggs, some brandy. I would like to be Charlie. Rose. <laughs> like, 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 version. I don't know if you ever saw this. I'd like to be a, a version of Charlie Rose and be all, all cool and classy. I got two guests on tonight. We're going to talk about a couple things and have yeah. Dave, the professor, and Jay on at the same time. We're like, we're going to talk about a few things. And then give them some fed comment from some, some fed commentary and see what happens. And we have a special guest that you didn't expect, Tom. Here we go. And uh, what, what do you say? <laughs> like, and just and just watch it go. And I'll make sure I say all the worst questions in the world. And does, I just want to see what happens. Does Tom show up with a steel chair in hand? And, and no, no, it's a Barb Ryer wrap steel. Chair. Oh, okay. I have Thank one you. already prepared, just for the thing. I'm just trying to picture Paul in a Charlie Rose role. <laughs> that's and that's where you lost me, Rod. You should not be picturing that. Yeah. No one should. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I'm actually that's a, that's drinking. A I'm drinking the Klingon <laughs> go, right. from out of Joe State, out of New York, Schmaltz Brewing. Oh, Schmaltz that's Imperial. Nice. That's my geek out beer. Not being a dork. Is it good? Homebrew from... Oh, yeah, it's really uh, good. <laughs> what, what, are you, what are you drinking, Drunken? Uh, it's a lager. Homebrew. It's one of my homebrews. Ooh. Yeah. It, I don't know if you can see the uh, bubbles or not. It's kind of bubbly. Uh, it's like a Budweiser clone of sorts. It's a good summertime beer. Who's going to clone Budweiser? Except for that it's better because no, you made No, 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 no. It's a Budweiser clone. Clone, clone. No, no, this is homebrew, baby. <laughs> The Budweiser so the, wishes they could do it like that. So, so the Budweiser, Budweiser with flavor. Pretty sure Drunken wants to challenge Budweiser. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, just, uh, I, just, uh, I bought uh, a fast permit, and I bought uh, a bunch of different stuff, bought a caging system, and uh, bought nice. some LME, a bunch of LME <laughs> and some good stuff. And uh, I don't have time to brew right now, but I do have time to make an extract brew, so that'll be the first thing going in the cake. There you yeah. go. Let wrong yeah, with that. Quick and easy, yeah. As much as I have to say, it, Paul, your your audio is kind of quiet compared to everybody else's. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have said anything. Copy that. Like, oh, that's that's the preference. That, that that's the preference. He's whispering to us. I think. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> He's seducing us. <laughs> that's his talking dirty voice. <laughs> it's his radio voice. It's his Charlie Rose no, we, voice. Mm -hmm. So. We gotta we gotta get him a, a couple of drinks in him, and then he'll uh, turn into the, the the wonderful PA guy that we all love. What do you mean? Or you're, something. You're, your shirt yeah. will be misplaced. There you go. Now your audio is better. <laughs> in the basement, that Tom is now the new Dusty Rhodes. So, fuck him. <laughs> Are you talking about in the basement or Tom? Both. Oh. <laughs> well, whoever comes first for Paul, he's good to go. <laughs> Paul has a little bit of hate in his, in his heart. A little bit of hate. He's not picky. No. So, flipping through this week, 
I say flip it through like it's a newspaper, it's actually more just <laughs> clicking through because of the internet. The Beer Association. Can you get like first of all, who are who is really the Beer Association? It's kind of like the shadowy part of the beer world that nobody it's really the, knows. It's Odessa. Yeah. <laughs> and they come out and they proclaim what's a craft beer, what's not a craft beer. We all know about that. We've had those discussions before. And it's like people just go ahead, follow along like they're zombies to whatever they say. But now, <laughs> now they're creating an independent label to start slapping on bottles so people will know if the brewery is independent or not. I mean, what are your any thoughts on the whole thing with the beer association? I mean Well, don't tell me what to drink, fuckheads. First. There you go. And then the other thing is uh, the Trappist breweries have been there before. They already said what's Trappist, what's not. Camera came after that, what's real ale, what's not. Now it's your time. And now it's your turn to basically tell us what we can and can't drink because what you classify. Guess what? I don't want to need I don't need another socialist society right. to tell me what I can't drink and what I can and what's good and what's bad for me. The snack gluten free, this and that, a hypoallergenic <laughs> and gender free. So go fuck yourself. Yeah, we did talk about that one. <laughs> oh, in short, Paul approves. <laughs> it was the, it's the whole thing with them becoming like so pompous. It's kind of like they're becoming like a character of themselves. Well, mm-hmm. I look at it from the from the side that like more resources or more information on a bottle isn't necessarily bad. It's nice that they're pointing it out to us. Like, hey, this is an independent brewery. But where I get lost is they are the ones that set what are independent breweries or not. So like, I, I don't like, I don't like that it's in their hands. Like if they, they control all that. So they can control is it, is it, who gets the labels and who year? doesn't. Is it, is right. it monetary per year? Is it, is it, is it, is it grain intake? Is it hop intake? Well, what? it's all about barrels. I it thought was like, it's about it? barrels. Like we go back to the Sam Adams example. Mm-hmm. So it used to be, if you made more than 2 million barrels, you were considered made less than that. You were considered independent. More than that, you would consider macro. Well, Sam Adams comes along, and they're chugging along. They go over the $2 million, They're about to be kicked out of it, and they say, oh, no, no, we'll go to $6 million now because we want to keep Sam Adams Well, in. then, basically, everybody with an oh, – by the way, Stone, this means you fuck faces. Um, <laughs> Settle down. Like, just just down. Million million <laughs> down. <laughs> in the basement, says, why is Paul so angry tonight? Greg, Greg Cook's going to come <laughs> through your fucking house and then tackle you over your couch. Uh, if, if, if Greg did that, his asshole would never be the same again. Uh, I know this from, like, from from experience. Greg Cock, yeah. Um, Stone, uh, like Oscar Blues, like which? Let's name them off. What what what's okay? What's not? Let's go here, guys. If you'd make over what? Because the one the one it's thing an arbitrary is, number. People are just pulling it out of the whatever they want to pull it out of. At at the end of the day, the though. Oh, bitch over and over again about these mass companies, these mass companies in America, these mass companies in America, but they love Fuller's. They love Polliner. They love Hawker Short. They're fucking mass murderous companies, you stupid sons of fucking bitches. Like, are you serious? They're macro companies. If you guys have a guess at home tonight, is the unedited, uncensored version. I know that's what the internet's called. Otherwise known as just Paul. <laughs> there is no uncensored, unedited edition of Paul. Tonight, handling with a Dennis Leary ass will be Paul from PA Brew News. Yeah, what you see. <laughs> uh, I think it, but you know what? So many, so many things that go on labels. You look at it like how many, I, how many breweries put the oh, we won, we won bronze in this fucking crazy competition that no one's ever heard no of before. Heard of, right. Yeah, it's like, does it does it really matter? At the end of the day, I don't think an average beer uh, purchaser, someone who comes in a consumer, is going to look at it and go, oh, he says it's independently made. Oh, I'm to totally buy it. They're not going to care. They're not even probably see that and really make a difference whatsoever. So I don't say it's a waste of time, but I don't, I don't think it's going to matter for most people. But I think it's them trying to feel like they're important. Like I said, they're like a shadow group that meets in the back room somewhere. Are they the mob? But it yeah, might, it might be. <laughs> they might have a little payola going on with some of the uh, breweries here. You want to get this label, it's going to cost you some dollars. Who knows? We don't know. We don't no. know. We don't know what they're charging. There, and then everybody reports on it following whatever they say. Mm-hmm. Freaking, they might be, they might be Illuminati for all we know. Nothing to do with these guys. Don't blame these guys, okay? You got that? <laughs> 
That's an we won't that. blame them, but for all we know, they could be Illuminati or some BS. It's just that the, that's that's the other uh, that's the Builder Bridges and all those. It has nothing to do with us. Leave us alone. <laughs> <laughs> but all it's right, just like Jay, do people you put do, do up, people Jay, leave us the fuck alone. <laughs> do people put too much behind the words of the Brew Association? Do they follow them too much? Do they give them too much power? You know, that people actually, it's like the rape beer, right? So you go to a store, you see these rape beer, rate, you know, ratings on stickers. And people say, oh, I'm going to get this one because this was rated 95 by rape beer. And you're like, do you know who the fuck rates on rape beer? They're not even, I, I wouldn't go by that. <laughs> even in my stores, Rajay, even in my store, Rajay, and, you know, the Publix and the Rouses, they'll have the rape beer sign on all these craft beers and whatnot. It's like, okay. What, what you're trying to tell me, you know? That started three years ago. It may say this. It may be totally different from my perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. right. you, know best, you know what the best part about, about when you see signs like that? You never see a tag under some really shitty bear. It's like, no, Rapier it gave it up seven. It totally it buy it because Rapier gave it a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Like it, it, yeah. The thing is, but in the, okay, I hate to say it intelligent because I'm far from that. But it says, like, who says it's good and why? Right. It's because it's hyped. Well, then every good is every beer that's good that's hyped is good because at the time it's hyped, so it's all good. At one point in time, guys, PBR was fucking hyped, and then the hipsters with the man buns were giving it ninety nine out of hundred. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I mm. specified man buns. That was uh, that was. <laughs> I specified man buns because I want to find. <laughs> <laughs> is, that like a, is that like a Saudi stole from like sumo wrestlers? Because they had man buns back in the day, and pretty much but they were always sexy because I like big bitches. <laughs> it, must, it must have been the thong with the man bun. Big, big beautiful men for you, Paul. Nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> I, th I think th you know what though a lot of people do get upset about that and, and if you do see like the rape beers or beer advocates or even now untaps the big thing a lot of places will even on facebook i'll see it be like uh we have a new beer available it gets a 4.15 out of 5 on tap i don't mind that from a perspective if you're i guess educated and know hey that's just a, a resource. Untap is a resource. Beer Advocate's a resource. Rape Beer's a, yeah. a, very, a very poor resource. But it's, it's a resource nonetheless. Anybody who makes a definitive purchase or decision based on any of them scores is already stupid to begin with because that's just the blind following the blind. You're a sheep at that point. If you look at someone's score and you go, I'm going to go buy this purchase, uh, I'm going to go purchase this product because this, this says it's a 95 out of 100. Go try it for yourself, regardless of what the score is. The only way you'll ever figure anything out in life, and more specifically when it comes to beer, is if you try the beer yourself. That's the only definitive way to know if you like it or not. Nobody else and is going to tell don't, you. I myself. don't blame anybody for saying, hey, this says it's a 99 out of 100. I'm going to try it. I don't blame anyone for doing that. No, but wait, because more often than not. Try it, it yourself, and then you know exactly. Like that one sip will tell you if that sure. 99 meant something. But more often than not, if you see a beer ranked 90 out of 100, 95 out of 100, it's probably pretty good. It might not be a 95, but it's probably pretty good. And if you see a beer ranked mm -hmm. fucking 10 out of 100, it's probably not the greatest beer or it's probably not a style that's popular. So if you go in with a, a level-headed mind going into it knowing what to expect, they're good resources. If not, then I, I don't know. I feel bad for you because I don't think you're doing it correctly. Because that's not the whole point of rating systems is to base all of your decisions off of them. They're supposed to be a resource right. to help you and guide you. Sure. Well said, Joe. Well said, Joe. Yeah, you know, that uh, makes perfect sense, sure. But like, I see some of the stores, and they only put them out there wherever a certain level. Like, you got to be like over 85 or something to get up there. But <laughs> yeah. I, look no, the, I, look a, I look on a rate for beer site, and I'll see something that might be like rated at 75. Yeah. And it might be something like, you know, a barley wine or a ghost or something people just aren't used to. It's like it's good beer, fits the style. It does what it's supposed to do. It does everything, delivers. But the people rate it don't really know those styles, and they bring down the beer. So it's just one of those things, like just the whole, the whole rating thing that some of the things do. And that's one of my other things is, you know, how much do, you, do people really value the ratings of beer tubers? Like a lot of guys will give ratings in their videos, but does it really matter? If I don't know your rating system – why should I pay attention to what you may rate a beer? Because if somebody says I give this one an A, what exactly does that mean? Are you giving it an A yeah, because of just the taste overall? I mean, does it fit the apparent? <laughs> does it fit? You know, so it's kind of like 
how much value do you put on the people that actually rate these the videos on the beer? You you want me to, do you want me to actually tell you about my fuckable skill again? <laughs> uh, we would we would prefer not to hear that, Paul. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's, why like, uh, that's why I like when Tom does his. He does as a buy again or not buy again. Yeah. And then this it's a really rating system. Well, I think everybody, you know, which I think is a good, you know, buy again, and it's good enough for you know for that people. Not necessarily on a scale of whatever to whatever, you know. Right. He knows what your scale, or actually what your what you prefer, you know. Right. Go ahead, Jeff. I look at it from a perspective. When I watch beer tubers, every, it seems like everybody has a different scale. So many people rate out of five, some rate out of 10, some do out of 100, some do letter grading, some do a combination. I never put too much stock into what their rating is because I honestly don't care. And I don't say that from any kind of bad place. I say that from the only rating that should matter is your own. So if I see somebody rate something and go, okay, I give it a nine out of 10, I know they like it. I don't care if I know if they like it, if they think it's great or good. I just know they like it. But at the end of the day, it, it really doesn't matter to me because you can tell throughout a review if someone likes it or not. That arbitrary number they give at the end is only for them. Really, it's only for them. But I will say, in, in regards, Rod, to you talking about like styles and stuff, I always like to – I always wish that when beer tubers start their channels or at some point they tell me like – their preferences when it comes to styles and break down their, their, their scoring system just so I have a better idea. But like, if I know somebody doesn't like, I don't know, Imperial Stouts, for instance, I don't know who would, but let's say people don't like Imperial Stouts. If I, I, see, them, yeah, if I see them review an Imperial Stout, I'm probably going to say to myself, they're probably not going to like it. So how much stock am I putting into this review from them? Probably right. nothing. It's just one of those things that I think one word that doesn't get used enough, but should really be used when it comes to beer tubing and looking at rating stuff, just use some logic, you know, like some common sense in there. So many people need this black and white. And it's like, it's not like that. Just use some common sense. And, and if you use some common sense, more often than not, you'll be fine. So many people lack that common sense and they get upset when they see ratings that don't follow the line of maybe how the review was or their own personal taste. And it's like, it's more often than not, these reviews are personal opinions, personal preferences and personal tastes. So, right. hey. Yeah, but most of the Take thing is floor. anymore in the beer community, you don't agree with me, you're a dickhead and asshole. Oh, exactly. <laughs> that's why yeah, at times the beer the Facebook, community you see, that, you see that on some of the Facebook groups like yeah you know, man, like seriously it's just beer guys relax. yeah god forbid someone <laughs> has difference of opinion when it comes to a fucking alcoholic beverage ooh I hate you because you don't like this beer as much as me well that's yeah. how life works in general hey period. sweetie let me uh, just tell you there's multiple reasons why I hate your guts it just seems <laughs> you know what fellows it just seems that way within our community which scratches my head when I see that I mean folks it's a it's beer it's At beer least it's yeah. head, you don't that's it's all it is flavor. it's about <laughs> beer it's beer it's like you any know, other beer. hobby so, some people take it more seriously than it needs to be it's supposed yeah. to be for mo for for the vast majority of people on YouTube people who are in inside of uh it's a hobby is what I'm looking to say. It's, it's, it's like fly fishing. Calm right. fly. Yeah, it's yeah. a hobby. Some people get into the actual industry and become brewers and, and, and part of it, and that's their living. That's fine. But for the vast majority of people out there, it's a hobby. You're supposed to enjoy it. And guess what? Not everybody's going to like one another because you have one co common hobby in in uh, you know in, in common with everybody. There's going to be well, people. It's, re it's recreational. It's supposed to yeah. be recreational. Same way it's like, hey, the same reason I, I took up necrophilia. It's supposed to be recreational. <laughs> we talk, we, are we talking beer or are we talking weed now? <laughs> we're, talking, we're talking Paul needs more beer into him right now. It's all the beer, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Quickly, quickly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it, it is definitely it's the uh, the opinion factor. But, it, yeah, it's just, you know, you see some of those that stuff out there. And it's kind of like I think some people take it a little bit more than it really needs to be. And then – it's just it's funny what you do, but I, but I know a lot of people like that dig into like some of that kind of stuff, and it's kind of like, yeah, I mean that's going to be their own personal opinion. So oh, some of them feel like it's like a duty to like like get so serious and and hate like and ABM them and do all this like a serious like thing, and they have to keep going and going like they're doing some kind of they're saving the fucking polar bears by doing this shit. <laughs> Calm the fuck down, right? Paul, you can't save the polar bears anymore. Sorry, buddy. Forget that shit, all right? Move on.
Well, if you can't laugh about stuff, you're doomed anyway, right? At, right. At the same time, though, there's I I, I think I don't want to pigeonhole people who are serious about it. If if you are serious about the hobby and you want to take it serious, that's fine. It's one of those things where pushing your agenda and your opinion on other people that maybe don't have the same opinion. That's where things go south. Where where they tell they, they you don't agree with them for whatever reason within the hobby and all of a sudden you're, you know, public enemy number one to them. And it, it this doesn't need to be like that. It's supposed to be enjoyable. Whether you take it casually or seriously, yeah. everyone's supposed to enjoy it because it's a, it's a hobby and that's at, at, it, at, at its heart. That's what it is a hobby. And some people just don't get that. Yeah. Well, the worst part is humans. I mean, just like humans. Well, are in general, humans right? And I get that. Like, it's like, Oh, well, you don't agree with me. I'm going to burn a building down. Or just like stop traffic because you don't agree with me. Well, <laughs> really, I'm burning the <laughs> and it's and, and it's honestly, Paul, it's like that for so many hobbies and stuff. That's why, like, when I see people talk about craft beer, like it's some special hobby. It's like, no, it's just a hobby. Like any other thing, you you like playing video games, you like watching movies, you like you know watching TV shows, you like listening yeah. to music. You're, you're it's all the same. Ruins. So no matter what, they burn the fucking house down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a we lost, but burn the town down. Like, we won. Let's burn yeah. the town down. Yeah, it's. Yeah, what is up? We use burn the stuff down tonight. <laughs> I like how we went from cra craft beer as a hobby to ball talking about boss. <laughs> boss. You the greatest phoenix. Necrophiliac to pyromania. You had a man living in the woods. He must have just burned stuff down like crazy. I tell you. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> Burning down the house. But that's burning down the house. But that's like one thing. Like when I do, like my video, I went back and forth at a point. Fuck, wait, do I put this in around? Because I'm not going to sit there with the BJCP sheet and actually rate it out in front of the camera. I mean, but if you are doing that, you can at least say, okay, this person has a system for what they're doing. Um, so it's kind of like I just put the stuff on my untapped because that's just my personal rating on everything. Yeah. But yeah. If you yeah. watch the guy enough, you'll see how he rates stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and you know what? There's this thing where you could just uh, ignore their rating at the end. Exactly. Like you, don't, you don't have to sit there and make a big deal that. about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, Everyone chooses with me not to watch yeah. me. I how dare you give that a 92? Stuff. It's an 87. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it how dare you give it a 60? It should yeah. be a 71. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, it's like a 5. A 5. Yeah. Like. <laughs> it's my it's my favorite beer. It's a ten out of ten. I think it's a five out of ten. Well, you guys want to fight over? It? I mean, you can. I don't know who's good. At the end, you're both losing, but it we doesn't. Only did one beer a really great tour, and that was <laughs> like the original lager, and that was one thousand point five twenty five seventy five point five out of one hundred, because <laughs> it was the best beer ever made, according to Joe. Yeah, according to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of all this talk. I remember, uh, I remember a year ago, Roger, you posted that story about Anthony Bourdain when he was uh, at a bar and uh, he talked about these craft beer guys are a bunch of zombies. They seem to get so sensitive and personal about some of these reviews and how he was at a bar, you know, getting having something just a beer, and then he saw some guy had like five beers, like in his little small little cups, and you know, sipping. I was like, you know, what he's saying to himself, you know, what the fuck is this about? You know, <laughs> the beer should be beer, you know? <laughs> and, and, and I, and I, I get the point because they're well, Bernadette is, not, Bernadette is not a fan of craft beer at all. No, no, and I get his point. He, like, there are a lot of people that do that, but at the same time, again, he's being very judgmental. And if somebody right. wants to go well, to the bar and spend. If you want to come up to me, Anthony, if you want to come up to me and make fun of me for that, you might wear one of them and you might get a headbutt. <laughs> That's fine. Because I'll make a deal. I'm, just, I'm just saying, I see both sides of it. There are people who take it too seriously. But if you go to a bar and you want to spend you know, 10, 15 bucks on a flight and you want to take tasting notes because that's what you enjoy, someone like him shouldn't be judgmental. Like, oh, well, it's taking it too serious. Why? If that's what they enjoy doing, why? it's not your right to tell someone they're enjoying their hobby wrong. He's not bothering sure. you. He's not over there telling you, calling you an idiot because uh, you don't like this beer or you don't agree with it. He's just having a fun. Now, if he thinks it's too serious, then it's his opinion and his right to not want to be in the craft beer community, not drink craft beer. But you shouldn't be making fun of people for enjoying their hobby like they want to enjoy. I mean, it's not like, like we're sitting around playing Dungeons and Dragons. That can get pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> Someone yeah. might lose a limb. Why didn't you bring the battle axe? <laughs> right. Don't test me. 
That is such a sucky role you just did. Man. But you guys have to remember, we come from, and and this is this is all not lost on me whatsoever. But you guys, I say you guys because I don't have a channel, right? But I've I've reviewed beer on beer. I've been on different channels and stuff. But yeah, we we. we <laughs> We, yeah, we no, from a no wants to get on everyone's channel once before. Yeah, once done. I'll be on everyone's channel, but not my own. Yeah. Uh, so you're, like, you're, like, uh, you're like a a uh, traveler, shady guy, whatever. You just go. To yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a con- I'm a contract reviewer. I don't I don't I don't brew in my own place, you're but I'll go to everyone else's and brew. <laughs> no, but but it's one of those things where it's like we say this from we. I don't want to. I don't want to pigeonhole everyone. And say, but like we're like the epitome of nerds when it comes to beer because we have channels. You talk about we we go and hang out, so we talk about it. But no one should look down because we discuss it every week for a couple hours because we enjoy it. And if other people don't like it, they can fuck off. They don't have to enjoy it. They don't have to watch. You know, well, some people think that you're giving a twenty minute documentary about stuff. You're you're simply tasting what you taste, and that is subjective because it's mm-hmm. your own palate. And this is what you think about the beer. That's it. And you and you want feedback, and you want to be in a community with other like-minded individuals that enjoy the same thing you do and discuss it. That's the whole point. The other thing is, I like it when I go, "Did I taste correctly?" And they go, "No, you really fucked up." Shit, sorry. You know, like, mm -hmm. why did I fuck up? What 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 tasted like? What taste did I fuck up? What notes did I fuck up? That you know that kind of thing. It's good. It's fun. You learn. You grow. That's the whole point of the thing. You, there's you some want, people who the thing is there's a lot of people not talking about macro people, but there's a lot of people. Macro who, people. Who, like, yeah, <laughs> the racist, <laughs> those people. Are a racist bastard, you know. Macro people out in the front yard. Yeah, shut up, yo. I'm just, I'm just trying to say there's a lot of people who are used to drinking macro beers. Who right. don't taste almost anything in their beer because they drink it ice cold, and they drink mm-hmm. it. They, they drink. I have a lot of people where I live. They what? What do you drink? Uh, I drink Straubs or Genesee. Why? Because my dad drank it. Well, okay, you're already a creature of habit. You already know what you're drinking. You already know what it tastes like. You can't even taste it anymore because you know what it tastes like. Right. So, I like to see what they. I even give macro beer or micro beers to them. Because let me know what you think about this. Yeah. Like, I want to hear your opinion. Like, let me hear what you say. Because the thing is, like, I don't trust my own my own palate. Like, okay, what do I what do I taste? That's the thing about beer reviewing and the internet on YouTube. Someone can come back and be like, I didn't get any of what you're saying. Oh shit. Okay. Let me see if I can buy it again and taste it again. Like, I don't like you know. I did I uh, get the bleep in a white IPA. Well, Joe, I can never get over that story with the white IPA. It always comes back to haunt me. Yeah, I know. Well, the, the, at least it's not bleached the weed ale. Yeah, that comes back to haunt everybody. But uh, Joe, Joe uh, knows the conversation where uh, Tom and Jay said you have to drink a beer at least six times to understand a beer. Uh, well, if yeah, if your palate's completely burnt out, you have no idea what you're drinking. Yeah, yeah maybe. <laughs> I, I'm very confident at what I drink and when I drink it, and if I drink. The first beer at room temperature slowly and do a review it is the same fucking thing if not less one flavor yeah than the last beer i drink well when you're making beer it's just like when you're cooking right so you're tasting stuff through the you know I mean? process yeah. when you get a finished yeah. product you know what it's supposed to taste like and you taste it you don't have to taste you know six cream puffs to know if everything is done right on it you can taste from the first one and know i need about right 12. On. Yeah, you're just showing up at that point, Joe. I'm just eating all the cream puffs. I think they're free. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you what they you know they go to culinary school right? That they learn how to. You can taste stuff from the first time. It doesn't take me six things, three things. I can after one, just drinking one bottle, I can go through and get flavors and stuff out of it. If you're drinking the proper way, you're supposed to drink it too. Some people drink their beer too cold, so they don't get the taste. They don't get the aroma. You have to know what the style is you're drinking and know how you're supposed to enjoy it. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
And like, this yes, Klingon like, border I, is smooth. Warm now. Yeah. smooth. It is it's so, <laughs> so smooth. Uh, 150 yeah. <laughs> degrees might be a little bit too warm for a beer. I understand. Yeah, Paul, Paul likes his like borderline boiling, so I'm not not down. He likes it like the temperature of blood. So yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. Just like his steak, right? Like, oh wow. Like he likes his steak purple and not and, and and maybe moving a little bit. That's, I, that's what he. I does. think Paul should have a showdown between the, the steak. I said I like my steak and I like my women cold and purple. Paul needs a uh, showdown. All right. Versus eating pizza. <laughs> Those are the two things that Paul needs to have a showdown on. <laughs> Roll it up, slam it down. So some of the comments out there, I like in the basement that had back, went while back said Paul the Whisperer. Um, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough, man. He said it doesn't matter where it's brewed, only matters if it's good. The beer got a silver award. Wow, the first loser. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay. Absolutely correct. He said, time for a beer with tons of mimosa notes. <laughs> Which they are using wine barrels and stuff now too in the beers. Um it would be it would be nice though if some reviewers would actually know what they are talking about. In parentheses, he has Peters. <laughs> um <laughs> Craig says Paul's the fire starter. <laughs> Paul's the fire starter, twisted fire starter. <laughs> I'm the fire starter, twisted. In the base of the hashtag smooth, I think when I said smooth, so yeah. Yeah, smooth. We have a, uh, we have a uh, French Canadian friend, uh, Guy, his uh, channel's oh, Drinking yeah. in Canada, and he has his, his cousin called Pascal, and he, you know, he doesn't speak He's the greatest he English. English. But whenever he tries to say smooth, he always goes, oh, that's so smooth. And it's great. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> he says smooth. He says smooth. So everything's smooth. I like that. <laughs> Get that trend in hashtag smooth. Oh, that's so smooth. <laughs> so can or bottle beer, do you have a preference? Do you think one is better than the other? Cans. I absolutely adore cans. You know, I do. But Talk to someone yourself while I get a beer, but keep it going. <laughs> A.K.A. Oh, Paul, you just talk, apparently. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> all right, all right talk. What, I, love, I love cans. I really do. And the cans, for, especially for IPAs, are just fantastic. However, every time I've had it so far, Fuller's London Pride, it's better out of a bottle. It always is. I don't know what it is. However, like Torpedo is always better out of a can. I think it might have to do mm. something with like the hoppiness Freshness, that kind of that kind of thing, or a stupid palate, but either way you look at them, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't expect that. That comes with everything I say with Joe. Yeah, yeah. Attack. How about the rest of you guys, John? Junkin one, Todd. What do you guys think? We don't care. What uh, the the <laughs> torpedo. That, that's the Sierra Nevada. It comes in a can. I, I, torpedo I, in a can. I've seen it in a can mm -hmm. before. Yeah, it comes oh, in yeah, we don't get our cans around here. You know, okay. Nice. Well, you know what? I always felt there's certain beers that you know is better in a bottle and always viewed it in a bottle than in a can. Like Guinness Extra Stout is better in a bottle. Same oh, with okay. Heineken. Same with Corona. It's hard to see them in 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 cans instead of bottles. Well, if you know, put a, if that's you put what you grew up seeing. If you, you put know? a Heineken bottle next to a Heineken can and open them, you'll smell the skunkiness off the bottle. Well, that's what I, the can. That's but, what I was going to ask. That's what makes Heineken uh, so great. That's I what I was going to ask you, Sean. Is, is that you what like, it is? You you're used to the you're, you're used to the classic. Can, you're used to the classic the Corona Heineken skunkiness that is becomes right, like part of this yeah. allure or whatever, then, right? Exactly. It's a, it's no, a pre no. perception, isn't it? Well, because that's what you grew up seeing those. You said, you know, this was a beer that was always in a bottle. And then all of a sudden, what the fuck, Corona in a can? I never saw one in a can. It's always been in a bottle with me. <laughs> but that doesn't give an image that you that always grew up seeing, you know? <laughs> No scope zone. 
No, I just saying about the whole stunt thing, but it's just lots of things are not around anymore. I saw I saw kids hang out in the library in the mall. They're not there anymore. There's lots of things I grew up seeing I don't see anymore. <laughs> we you know, see guys that run pedal vans. No good. No good. Drive guys that run pedal vans. I mean, economically, <laughs> and I think for some of these breweries, I know it makes sense to to do that. You know, put them in cans. You know, and again, you know, avoiding the sunlight and all the skunkiness and everything else in these, in these bottles. But I think all you know, all you grew up a certain way, seeing things a certain way. Yeah. And I guess maybe nostalgia like hey you know Guinness extra stout in the can versus a bottle I guess uh, I would I, I I used to I um I'm sorry uh, go ahead go ahead go ahead I, I used to grow up drinking extra stout because that was the thing for an extra stout and I used to get cases in from St. James Island and mm. I loved that I loved it, I loved it so much I used to put it on the heater and get it hot because I would do it. <laughs> and I drink it and wow. I loved it <laughs> but and then all of a sudden, I thought it tasted like shit, like a carbol shit. It's like, what's wrong with this beer? And I found it was from Canada. It was from New Brunswick. They got licensed out to New Brunswick, and they, I just ever since then I stopped drinking it, man. And the thing is, mm. that was me growing up. However, for the new batch of people drinking this shit beer, ah, uh, however. It might be better for them to get it in cans. It might taste better in cans. So that is something, unfortunately, over the the decisions of the brewery, maybe it would be better to put it in cans because what I was getting, dude, was shit from, uh, from New Brunswick. St. James Island, always good. And I could taste the difference without knowing the difference. And then I well, found well, out. I think they're putting them. I think growing up. I think they're putting them in the cans. I think they put them in the cans to save save the money on the glass, and so, so that's their way of getting out cheap is to, well, that's to put great. them in aluminum cans because aluminum's cheap. They, they do the drought though, they do the nitro, but they don't do the extra stout yet though. They don't do the original Guinness extra stout in cans yet, which they should. Right. Like, hey, hey, macro guys that know everything, everything, all the time, everything. Hey, by the way, you're fucking up. Put it in cans, asshole. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Just for you, well, buddy. You're, you're talking. You're talking about the Guinness? They have it in cans with the with the nitro and stuff. They have it here anyway. I'm sure y'all have seen it or not. not. Oh, okay. That's the regular Guinness. I see. Right. Well, no, that's the black can. It's gets Guinness. I, I, I don't know if y'all are getting the same. They got Guinness Craft. Right. They got Guinness oh. Extra Stout. They got Guinness Foreign Extra Stout. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, my bad. I, I'm probably wrong. I'm probably wrong. Okay. Yeah, I'm probably right. No, you're probably just drunk, that's all. No. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, you're drunk. Because yeah, you're drunk in one. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm, working on it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to... See, y'all are all reviewers. I'm just a brewer. <laughs> see how, how this yeah, works, Drunk in One? I have a good palate. <laughs> drunk in One. How this works is you're drunk and Paul's wrong. That's how that works. <laughs> Damn right. Okay. Damn right. <laughs> Let, let me get further along with my end of it, because I don't feel like I'm holding up my end of the deal here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, though? I think, it is, I think it is nostalgia a little bit. I mean, if you think going back to when we're kids and you're drinking soda pop, uh, and you're drinking a nice cold Coke or Coca-Cola or Pepsi out of a glass bottle, and then when they switch to, to, to say um, – Don't you uh, say Pepsi clear. Oh, boy. You switch it to cans, you switch it to plastic bottles – and if you go back and drink them out of the glass bottle, oh, my God, they're great. They're so much better than the cans. Oh, yeah. And there's a reason for that because it, I, I do think it t- tastes better out of bottles, but it isn't cost efficient. So I understand where they're going with it. And, not, and, and again, this is, this is talking 20, 30 years ago where liners for cans sucked. For the most part, you would sometimes get tinny. More often than not, get tinny tastes and whatnot. Now, nowadays, liners are great for cans. You don't really get off flavors at all. Like when people go, oh, it's tinny because it's coming out of can. More often than not, it's just the beer itself. Oh, retard, not really the can. Retard, yeah, it's not the can. It's just, no, buddy. just whatever, how they brewed the beer, whatever they're using. So I, if, if all things were equal, cost and everything, I would always want the bottle be I, for, for drinking purposes. But if you're sending out beer mails or your your log, you know, fucking going on a beer trip and bringing back cases of beer, of course you want the cans. You're not going to break them. Uh, way more cost efficient. You send out beer mails. They're cheaper. It's just better overall. But, you know, gu- gun to my head, I'll take the glass bottle every every single time as, as, as far as taste goes. But yeah. 
it, I don't think there's that much of a difference anymore. I like I like more of the cans myself, but I'm actually yeah, I'm, are- I'm in an area where we deal with a lot of cans. So like, uh, Todd was drinking a Braxton brew. That's in a can. We got Mad Tree. We got Ryan guys. We got a bunch of other breweries. And brewers used to use cans where they switched to bottles. And they went back. And it's right. the whole thing is they just did. kind of like more of a preference. But the thing is, like when people say nostalgia, I think. Well, yeah, yeah but like huge. 30 years ago, I had all shit beers. It was either yeah. like Miller High Life, Budweiser, so freaking Milwaukee's out? Best, or some past blue ribbon. And it was like, yeah. Yeah, you don't have the choices you have now. So I'm and like, screw the nostalgia. I mean, yeah. I want good beer. I honestly think that the, the improvement on lining is, is way understated. Like the lining for beers nowadays is mm-hmm. great. You don't have the issues you had 20, 30 years ago with the can tasting the change of your or changing the taste of your beer like you don't have that anymore and that was a real issue in the 80s and early 90s like that was something that was legit nowadays people are just i don't know what they're doing they're yeah. tasting weird shit in their beer and they probably should talk to the brewer about it <laughs> Brian, do, do, do you think if you did a side-by-side a blind taste test of a can versus bottle do you think you'd actually do Nowadays, hey, probably not. That's a good question. Well, with some stuff like that's you can hide again, blind taste, and know which one's skunky. You know. <laughs> well, well, if if whatever bottle you got was directly placing some light, like if you got a twelve yeah. a twelve pack that's covered up, you probably do it with a Corona too. Yeah, because Corona with a clear bottle versus their can. It depends right. on how it was how it was stored. Yeah. If you if you go get bottles of Corona, like a twelve pack or a case, and it's in the back and it's in the all packaged up, it's not going to be skunky. Because it's it's not hitting it's there's no yeah, light through there's it. no light going through yeah. it right it, it's gonna be like drinking it out of the can now if you get ones off the shelf yeah they're gonna be skunky because that's just how that works <laughs> you're like the vampire they, they, they get, <laughs> <laughs> keep it out of the sunlight pretty <laughs> much and not just that it may be a day too you know yeah you know. Yeah, you gotta look at those dates as well. It's like, oh, well, okay, it's, it's, it's seven months old, but hey, it's we, were talking about, sure. we were talking about the brewer label, and Joe was talking about the stuff they put on. They still can't put freaking dates on everything. I don't know. Settle down, Greg. Huh? Get it under control. <laughs> you know, well, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for Rod to go on a 35 minute rant. You guys can throw it or is this beer good? Yeah, it's still good. It's just been on the shelf since 2015. Oh no! That was that was an eight beer, but it has no. It's not like it's a ten percent. I'm talking about like a five percent, like ale. (laughs) What? It's funny because, in addition to the lack of you know bottling and can dates, like I said, it's very understated how beer is stored and and how long certain like uh, uh, you know bottle shops keep beer. Like if you don't have a date on it and it's out on a warm shelf for fucking eight months. The beer's not going to taste like it did when it was, you know, two weeks I'll old. I'll give right? you one more, buddy, Joe. Yeah, yeah. At the place that I go, it's stored next to a fucking pizzeria that has a like hundred some odd degree fucking temperature because they're cooking pizza. And, and the, the mix of six is stored right there from 2015. I'll tell you what, it is cherry. It <laughs> hey, uh, ex- extreme uh, temperature temperature changes. I mean, drunken little and all this and Paul from brewing and whatnot, but like you don't yes. want extreme temperature changes. You don't yeah. want your beer to going from 40 degrees to 100 degrees back to 40. It's going to yeah. fuck yeah. everything up. It's just going to re-ferment. There's a lot of things that can happen. You don't want that. Yeah, exactly. and, 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 and when people store so, it incorrectly. Like a lot of bombs to me. Yeah, and, and you and you walk into a store where you don't know them personally, you don't know how they take care of their beer, you don't know what they do with it, you don't know what you're getting most of the time. Yeah. And a lot of people will review beer on YouTube, on Untapped, on Beer FK, whatever. They got a bad bottle, but they're like, this beer shit. Well, maybe it's the greatest beer ever, but your bottle shop doesn't know what they're doing. Right. Yeah, and at least I got, yeah, I, got, yeah. I got two good stores that are at least good about it. Like they take, <laughs> when beers are out there and they're too long, they take them, they put them over here. Over here. Every beer here's a dollar. You know it's all going to be shit beer. So you're not going to complain about it. But hey, you're going somewhere, you get some shit beer, here you go, one dollar a bottle, whatever. But I got other stores that don't take them yeah. off the shelf. They got them mixed in there. You got to go through. And, and, and you know, there's some craft beers. They'll do that too. Yeah. So they'll do that with the craft beers. You know, whether it be you know some of the uh, bells, whatever different brands, and they'll say, okay, we're selling for fifty five cents a can or seventy cents a can, a dollar a bottle, dollar twenty five, and you got to look at those dates. And when you see that date, it <laughs> says. You know, you're January. Here it is. You're you're in you're in uh, June. Was it today's June 29th, 28th, 29th? And you find out that bottle was from April 29th. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 
now, now you're drinking now, a six now, month yeah. old two hearted. That's not ideal. Yeah. Right. But if you know yeah. beer, if you know beer and you know the style, like some of the stores, and they'll they'll mark stuff down because they've had it too long, and you'll find mm -hmm. this twenty two ounce bottle or something, and it'll be like an imperial stout, twelve yeah. percent ABV. Yeah, they're like three ninety yeah, nine. Yeah. Like, yeah, this fucker will hold for years. Hell yeah, throw that in the cart. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the greatest it's deals fun. ever. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> I went to the store it's and I had a single twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all about the styles because hell, they don't know. It's just beer to yeah. them. But if, if you know what you're looking for, yeah, your IPA is going to be crap, but you, you get a, a stout or some sort, you know, or something that's going to last. Hell yeah, buy that shit up. Yeah. In, in a perfect world, I would love, obviously, I think we, we, we all love to have every single bottle or can dated. But if they just did one thing, just date. Or, 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 or just date the bottles or cans for hop forward stuff. That's all. It's just, just stiff. stuff I need to drink fresh because it's all about the hops. I don't care if you date an Imperial Stout or a Porter or whatever. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not going to yeah. make a significant difference. But if I'm supposed to drink this yeah. super fucking quadruple dry hopped with all this magical powder <laughs> and all this shit, if I'm supposed to drink this under a month old, then I would like to yeah. know how old my fucking beer is because I don't want to spend – like a lot of this shit's expensive. You go buy these four packs of beers that are $16, $20 because they're, they're double dry hopped and we're using so many pounds per barrel and blah, blah, blah. It sounds great, but if I'm hey. drinking it six months old, it doesn't matter to me because it's I'll all faded anyway. Yeah. 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 Well, it's like I, I picked up a bottle one time that said drink fresh on it. There was no date. There was no package date and there was no <laughs> like Fuck. drink I fresh by when, you man. know, so. <laughs> I was like, I'll put that back on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> it was about yeah, it was about two weeks ago. I told I told you guys about this, and so you could laugh at it. Two weeks ago, we just got in <laughs> on the shelves. Yeah. Ten thirty one sixteen. Yeah, yeah. Joy buy from Stone, right? Like that, that's a Best Buy. It's not a fucking label. Because he goes, oh, that's just the name of the beer. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Mm. Well, it, it, it is, but it's date. also the best. You're right. It, it, it is, but it's the date that you need to be getting at. Yeah. You know, there's a reason why they say that, you stupid fucking cunt. Like, I believe it says stupid fucking cunt right on the label. No, I think it does. <laughs> so when it's Labor Day, Paul goes to beers Best Buy 7417. <laughs> I'll have some great stories about that, man. It's just like, oh, this showed up, but it's eight months old. I'm like, you just need to leave. Like leave the area, just fucking go somewhere they else. That's they terrible. still have, they still have ridiculous from 2015 on their shelves. Oh, it's not. I've seen that a few places around up here too. Now it's an yeah, American yeah. barley wine. That's what it's like five ninety nine or something for them. Fifteen ninety nine a bottle. What? No, that's way too wow. much. Wow. Yeah, fifteen ninety nine. Too high. That's too high oh, fresh. Actually, that's way too high I'll fresh. If it's definitely. <laughs> 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 Um, Australia, Australia has a deal going on now. You have to understand, like they pay a lot for beer because they have a high, you know, minimum wage. By the way, guys, think about this, guys. Hold on, just think about this, America. Big <laughs> fucking low. Uh, I didn't see close to it. Is it story time back. with PA Brew News? I'm, I'm down. Let's go. Yes, sir. Think I'm ready. Let's do this. Minimum wages, assholes. Okay. They just did a deal, a deal on a four pack of KBS in in, in Australia. Fifty nine ninety nine. No way for KBS. No. Yeah, for no, that's a deal. By the way. Yeah, is, is it now? It's a great deal. Yeah. Did you say fifty nine ninety nine? Yeah, he said sixty dollars. Yeah, but you have to understand. Right. Wow. That the, the, the minimum yeah. wage because it's so high. They pay forty dollars for a, a four uh, six pack that. Budweiser. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. too much. And that, that's, that's what's going to happen. What's wage over there? <laughs> bastards! Like <laughs> if you keep on. And the currency, yeah. yeah. What is the minimum wage there then? What's the exchange? Yeah, what's the exchange rate right there? Yeah. What's the cost right, of living? Right. I guess. Okay. <laughs> maybe we should, maybe we should move there. Paul, what is, Paul, what is the minimum <laughs> wage? Hey, didn't uh, James Cameron move to New Zealand because of his money situation? I don't know. Well, it's funny because Trump, when he had met with the Australian Prime Minister, 
<laughs> but yeah, they got a good health plan. Their health plan is better than us. Let's cause they give everybody fun. Yeah, they don't care. Did they hang up on the Australian <laughs> Prime Minister or something? I could swear I remember reading that. Hi, Donna. How you doing? Hello, hello. Hey, Don. No. Fuck you, too. Hello. It's just quiet. Just going to sit there. And not say <laughs> you guys were all talking. You had Trump going. I didn't know. I jumped in the middle of conversation. I'm like, I just got home from just work, and I'm just pouring a beer and taking it all in. <laughs> I'm like, all, all right. right. Well, introduce yourself. Tell us what you're drinking, what's your sign, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what's your sign? <laughs> that was oh, the worst time I have on the I like <laughs> what you you the the <laughs> My name is Donna. I'm a cancer and I like beer. There you go. There you go. All right. I like long, oh, yeah, I like long walk from the beach. <laughs> <laughs> what beer are you drinking, Donna? <laughs> I'm drinking a kindred beer called Hawaiian Shirt, and mm. it's um, it's really nice. And I don't even really dig this style, but it almost sounds like a saison. It's crazily fruity. Oh, session ale with hibiscus and mango. And it's not even sweet. It's very tart actually, but it has a really nice flavor. It's just very refreshing. Who's it by? Who's the brewer? Who's the kindred. Kendrick. They're from Ohio. Nice. Mm, they suck. So you're in you're in northern Ohio. What breweries are near you, Donna? Because you're on the other. Well, well, I'm much. I'm about an hour away from Toledo now, but I used to live less than a half mile from um, the brew kettle. So I oh, used to be oh, close yeah, to the brew, brew kettle, kettle. and good. then I wasn't that far from Fat Heads. And if I got on the highway, I could oh, be yeah. in Akron and a minute out at Hoppin' Frog and Cleveland and all that. But Cleveland's got a whole lot going on. They've got a lot. We're opening up right now. They just opened up a huge beer garden, too, besides all these other upcoming breweries they have. And it's wow. really nice that a lot of people that I wasn't able to get, like I used to have to drive to go get, are now coming out my way. So it, it's really convenient for me, oh, and I, I like know. it. Yeah. Well, it should be. We should get them all together in Columbus. Like, oh. Oh. Showdown. So, so <laughs> you, got, you used to live in the, um, the Strongsville, North Olmstead area-ish? Yeah, that's where I used to live a long nice. time. I lived there like 11 and a half years, 12 years around there. The brew kettles, I, that's one of my, them and Fatheads, definitely. Probably my two favorites. Now, I was, see, I, I used to feel that way myself, but a long time ago, I shouldn't say a long time ago, like it was ages, but like probably about four <laughs> years ago, Back I started going out to this little Wooster college town, and there's a brewery out there. And they're just really small because it's out in the middle of Amish country. I'm not joking. It's literally a little town with a college, and it's smack in the middle of Amish country. They have a really great Wooster stout they make, and they have a really good IPA they make. Hmm. And they're just never heard of because they're so rural and so far away. But I used to go out there and just pound those stouts all day long. Wow. <laughs> I'd just be like, yep, I'm good. Let's just do this. Because like, it's like it was good. But not, hardly nobody knows about him. But now Ka has Small City Tap House, and he's friends with them. So he's starting to bring their kegs out here. So the only place you can get it is in downtown Sandusky or directly from them, and that's it. And they're pretty good, too. And I, I would say I would say they can make they can make stuff just as well, if not better. And it's nothing you... against Fat Heads, but Fat Heads has made, like, a couple things I haven't really dug. And one of their Belgians, to me, is too thin and too sweet. I do not like it. I was like, ugh. But I'll tell you what I do love. I love their super juicy hop juju. Yes. And you can only get it in the tap room, and it is yep. the shit. It's so good. Yeah. So good. Say Ohio right now, there's about, what, maybe 30 or 30, 40 breweries in that state. Is that fair? 30 or 40? Uh, we got 40 in Cincinnati alone. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, probably like Ohio, <laughs> Ohio is one of the only states that has um, – Ohio is one of the only states that has um, brew dog. And yeah. Brew Dog Columbus, came and baby. built over Ooh, here, really bumped, and right? we're the only ones that has it right yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, in America, like we, yeah. they came to us because we abolished our ABV law. So Nobody we have all kinds beer. of breweries just going crazy. I need to move to Ohio. Yeah, beer, look at that beer. <laughs> <laughs> Screw Alabama. John, John, a, a, John a, quick Google, a quick Google yeah. search. Uh, and yeah. Wikipedia is the first entry because we all believe Wikipedia at all times. But they said. <laughs> 
as of September 2014, there were 163 breweries in Ohio, and that was three years ago. So I'd imagine awesome. they're probably two more than that now. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, not Cleveland. We could have a show. But you know, not to not to knock Ohio brews, but Richmond brews are really big on the scene, and they have some really good things going on in Virginia. So you got to keep an eye on that too. Yeah, yeah I live in Alabama. We programs. have about like I live in Alabama. We have about like what maybe about I think my last check twenty breweries in the state right now, and we're starting to get a good reputation. It's it's not oh, like most right, right. the northeast. I've had the snake handler I pay from out there. You did? Yeah, I've had the snake handler IP. It's really okay. good. I like the snake handler. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've had that. It's good. Craig's throwing a little hate. He said, uh, brood dog or shit. So he's it's actually not in he's over in the UK. So <laughs> I think they're all taking this thing back. They all went like macro yeah. now. Is whatever. that because is, is that because Craig he uh, signed up for their GoFundMe? Is that why? <laughs> <laughs> He gets to own a piece of the brewery. <laughs> well, BrewDog has some really cool programs for their employees, though. Like, if you adopt a dog, even, you get, you get like, maternity leave to bond with your dog, and they pay you for it. Like, I'm ready to work there. I'm good. Hippie liberal thing. I want to twist your nipples. I can barely <laughs> tell you. Yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> Call it like you're whispering. Twist your nipples. You're whispering sweet nothing and nothing you into it. Didn't miss anything here. there, Donna. Holy, <laughs> 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 from Paul. How many beers are Paul, is Paul in right now? How many? How many beers deep is he? He's so deep he forgot a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> I know yeah, he's been really quiet. You know, <laughs> basically, you sound like Tom right now, Paul. Like when Tom comes cuts in and out. I'm not saying you are Tom or anything. I'm, I'm saying you sound like Tom. Don't work. Sorry. He was called Paul the Whisperer. <laughs> he were called very appropriate at this stage. I, I was, I was just on my headphones. They don't work anymore. Do you I have a fan know. on or something, or are you flying through the air? I don't understand. No, I, I don't have. A... I have a fan on. You might have. Oh, oh okay. You might have maybe, maybe... The microphone. Craig said it's six ninety nine a pound. Six ninety nine pounds is a bottle of KBS in the UK. Which is probably the go. Uh, well, here it was seven ninety nine a bottle. Yeah, so that's I think six ninety nine a pound would be like almost nine bucks American. That's about the same nine price nine. for the KBS here in, in uh, Mobile. I think that's over there. I, I thought it was good. But I don't think it was great. Like people were building up. No, and it's a lot easier to get. It used to be one of those. It's an awesome beer. It's hard to get. Now it's still a good beer, but We're it's super easy to get it more. Yeah, so everybody thinks it's shit now because it's easier to get. It's still a really good beer, but there's so many beers, even locally, that compared to that are better than that. It, yeah. It's not like it was five years ago. I mean, it wasn't that much better than the Westified style from Lagunitas. Well, I think no, and La Lagunitas is like the same price for a bomber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'll give you double the amount of beer for the same price. Oh, really? Uh, sign me up then. In the basement, said forty-eight dollars for twenty-four cord light in Canada. Yeah, they, they get fucked hard for macros in Canada. You go up there and you're talking a buck and a half to two bucks a, a can or a bottle for macro beer. But craft beer is pretty much similar price to the, the States. But it's it amazing kind of that those beers... That we send the horrible Budweiser to Canada. Everybody else gets this, that Budweiser talks about how bad it is. Well, they sent a shitty Labatt Blue in most of Canadian, Canadian. So. I guess yeah. I was going to say, we get the Labatt and Molson Canadian and some of these other beers from Canada comes down here to the States and they're reasonably priced and then you go up there it's like you know um you know buying any American beer or any Canadian beer it's like you know damn that's well, I live right on the Great Lakes and um we used to travel over to Peely Island in Canada all the time so my very first beer I ever had was with my dad and it was Canadian beer do you remember which beer Oh, yeah, it was just regular good old classic Molson. Molson can name it. No, I, like, I, if I was a beer drinker in Canada, specifically Ontario, I would not drink macro beer anymore just based on the pr price. To pay $48 for a case of Bolsa yeah. Canadian, some, yeah. someone would have to steal my wallet and then buy it for me because I'm not well, doing that. You know, I'm in America. And, and, and there's, there's, there's good breweries in Canada, too. I mean, oh, Canada has their own GLBC. I mean, that... 
yeah. you know, not the Cleveland version. Yeah, they have their own Great Lakes Brewery. Yeah, Great Great Lakes Brewery. They make awesome beer. Like if you go up uh, the QEW, the Queen's Elizabeth Way, right at, after you go over uh, Niagara Falls or through Buffalo, and you just go up right through Toronto, you'll hit like 15 or 20 breweries, and at least half of them are great. All right, I won't say great. They're very good. Let's. let's I'm <laughs> they're, okay. yeah. they're, they're very good. Words matter, Joe. Words matter. Yeah, I can't be like they're all ten out of tens. They're fantastic. Except for my sound. Say say something, Paul. So um, a little better. The the in Ohio they just. You know, the ABV laws was when was that completely didn't Ohio, like, you know, do whatever. Not, didn't Ohio go like to 25%? I don't think they got rid of it. I think they raised it like 25%. Yeah, they raised it. Uh, it used yeah. to be like, our limit used to be like 12% or 12.1%. Yeah. It was around there. I think it, was, it wasn't that high, was it? Yeah, it was like it was like 12. It was, yeah. it was, yeah. it it was over okay. 12. I'm pretty sure. I think it's like 25, I believe, as well. And I'm glad you guys got rid of that because that was the most arbitrary, dumb fucking rule I've ever seen in my life. Like, what what's your answer? 12.1. That's great. 12.1. Why 12? Before, like beer sales in Indiana. Yeah, one yeah. of the few dumb rules you'll find in the beer world. Before yeah, like, two, oh, go ahead, John. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Before, before 2009, the, the ABV here in Alabama was everything was under 6%. After the law was passed, in 2009, we were able to sell beer over 6%. So, you know, and it's right. still kind of going through, you know, issues. Here. People are saying, well, you know, it's great, but, you know, we don't want to go to another high limit. And it, to you me, exactly. It just, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> you can love the Jesus. You're the Bible, bro. You can love the Jesus. You can't be buying beer. Exactly, but, but exactly, like, no, exactly. But, 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 but for spirits, I remember when I was in Alabama, my fucking uncle gave me moonshine when I was like nine. I'm like, are you right. serious? This is right. happening right now. That's what happened. I have right. no idea what's up with Paul. My minute to try to turn him up from here. Alcohol, like, like rubbing alcohol. Like, are you giving me this? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that explains a lot. That's yeah, yeah, it does explain a lot. It really does, right? I mean, for spirits, is no big deal. I mean, the, the the ABV, whatever, on spirits, you know, have, have at it. But when it comes to beer and all that, it was always, you know, oh, under six. Well, but it also, now, you got you to remember meat and wine, too. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's oh, true. Alabama, you, have, you have Everclear in Alabama? What do you say? You have Everclear in Alabama? Yes, we do. Okay. Where were the fuck I oh, was yeah. at it? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is coming together within regards to Paul. Nine, nine years old, he gets moonshine. It all makes sense. <laughs> People don't realize that Paul was the banjo player in Deliverance. So they don't know that. <laughs> Paul is Neil he's, from the Young the one with the pretty oh, mouth. Oh, what? <laughs> Paul, Paul you, are the, you are Neil from the Young Ones, according to Donna. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was gonna say my my family too is more like a total pole, very straight with a lot of ugly faces on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, <laughs> you you were talking earlier though, Rod, about uh like uh bottling and candy. Do you know it'd be great, especially in New York State, and I'm sure other states are like this. If uh, they made some kind of law where they had to put the fucking ABV on the can or the di- oh, half the time. Oh, well, you know, they ABV, you know, things that matter, right? Oh, so. here's yeah, this right. parallel. Here's oh, it's thing. an imperial parallel. It's ten percent. I'm gonna die. Yeah, right. You can put well, the here's the other thing there. too: is you'll have people that put these long, very detailed stories that have Stone. absolutely nothing to do with what's Stone. going on with the beer or what's in it, and you're just mm-hmm. like, I just wasted my Stone. time. Don't and allow why would you like, waste? Why, you why would you waste there? yours printing all that? Just simply put what the beer is made with in the ABV. You don't really need these big, huge stories and all this hype. If it's good, it'll sell itself, and I'll come back for it. If you write a book, I'm probably going to ignore you. And, and the best part is when those companies right. have those stories, and that they don't have the ABV. It's like you used. All this right. space on your label. They don't even and- have like the hop they use. They'll be like, oh, here's this super secretive triple IPA that we dry hopped on the finish and it was made on night shift. Yeah. Shut the fuck up and just get on with it. They're like, they're like, they're like, we ran short on space. We ran short on space. Like, just fucking say it, asshole. I can't take it. Shut the fuck up. And Donna and I like books. Right? 
Paul, Ron, did you turn down, Paul? Paul the Whisperer is talking here. <laughs> okay, yeah, Paul, did you turn down, Paul? Paul? What happened? It's like Paul got neutered. Oh, we love Your audio is really Paul. low there, Paul. Paul, we love books, Paul. Paul, we love books. We really like books, Paul. Twisted nipples out of nowhere. What? <laughs> Paul, we love you. We would love to hear you. That's that's the whole point. We can hear you. It's like puzzle. Well, my dog, you're you're not really in that. <laughs> okay. Now, now I heard. Right, it right click your, well, he screamed right at us. Your, yeah. your Make sure your microphone's turned up. He just he just tommed us. I don't. We can hear. My can, headphones won't work. <laughs> There you go, just talk like that all the time. Scream. Oh, yeah, Listen in anyway. Like you need a microphone, not a headphone. Right, right, right click your uh, speaker icon. Uh, check your microphone volume. I think it might be low. Usually you're like blaring. Coming soon, a GoFundMe <laughs> page for Paul's microphone. So you're saying, what, you're saying Paul's your headset broke? Yes. No, well, actually, it was just working because I was going to shit on fucking YouTube, but guess what? With this, it doesn't work. I feel like Google's probably not going to respond to that, but they might hear that. <laughs> anybody, anybody remember the old Saturday Live? Donna here tonight. Thank you for coming, Donna. Anybody remember the old Saturday Night Live with Chevy Chase and Garrett Morris? Yes. They do the news thing. It's like Paul needs like Garrett Morris behind him yelling everything he's saying. <laughs> oh, we're doing that. <laughs> what do you want? Oh, speaking of, oh, speak of it, S SNL, when Donna said Sandusky, Ohio, I was like, Callahan Auto Parts, Tommy Boy, Chris Farley, what's happening? Right? Uh, <laughs> and it was supposedly shot there, but only some of the scenes are from there. They just like went downtown with a camera and just took a picture of a couple places and no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> At least I put a Ray Man here in Cincinnati. But I still love it because it's like fat guy in a little oh, fat guy in a You know, I, mean, <laughs> right. I have I have a cousin who lives in Ohio, and everybody <laughs> talks about these Ohio stores. I say, man, I need to go spend a good summer in Ohio. Just go swim at the lake, drink some good beer, and just chill. You know. Let me let me help you with that. I Don't swim in the lake. <laughs> no, it, was, it, it was great when I was like it was great when I was a kid back in like the early seventies. But as of now, I would not recommend it. You might as well just go swimming in an outhouse at this point. Donna, I, like, I live in Buffalo, and uh, I concur one hundred percent. I concur. Yeah. Yes, that's the exactly Great Lakes how have is. gone to shit, and it kills me that they do not care about the largest bodies of fresh water on the fucking planet. The fucking planet, and they don't care. Same, well, I guess that's the same back. with Michigan too. I guess it's the same with Michigan as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, all the great lakes. Yeah, swim, just just swim in the pool. Well, it's like if I go back home to Jersey, no one goes to the shore anymore and goes in the water to boardwalk. Everybody just stays on the boardwalk. Yeah, because they don't want to get needles in their fucking legs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they do. And they're they're, just, they're gonna try it, Paul. You'd be amazed. You'd be amazed with the needle fashion on the boardwalk. Get, get that for a while. <laughs> That's probably a game teenagers play at this point, right? Yeah. Where, where are the noise? That's too, sad. Like, it was real sad. If, but, if, you, if know. you go swimming, don't gargle or swallow the water. Yeah. 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 Was a, I double dog dare you? How's it go? Yeah. <laughs> I triple dog dare you. But Therefore, he, he, bro he breached protocol and went, skipped right over the double dare into the triple but, dare. Listen, a Christmas story and Tommy Boy reference. My life is my complete. My tongue is stuck to Tonight, my tongue. it's done. You know. <laughs> now my life is an ass complete. Thank you, Paul. I don't want to live by the lake. I mean, I don't want to live by an ocean. You want to live by the storm. What? Yeah, I don't. I don't live by. I want to live by the ocean when there's a storm. So, you know, I went through that with. Yeah, I went through that with Isabel when I lived in um, in um, in uh, um, in Norfolk uh, back in 2003 when that came down, and right. uh, so I was like, you know, maybe I, used to I live figured in Virginia as well. Zach, I figured maybe live by lake, you know, a lake would be fine. I could go swimming and fishing and all, but after those comments that I heard from, from uh, well, you that, I mean, there's about not, swimming it's, in the it's, water, it's, thing. It's, ah. not, it's not that it's dangerous to swim in my areas. There are beaches that are clean. It's oh, just the you. fact that it's just the, the fact water. that there's water. there's there's introduced species and things into the lake that it's murky. You can't see what's touching you. They've got those damn lampreys and all these weird things that, like,
and mm -hmm. and snakes in the water and junk like the last time <laughs> i was in the lake was in the 90s and you're talking this is when i was in my 20s and i was with my friends wow. and me and my friend nikki were way out where you couldn't feel the bottom you know just you know sitting there chilling and talking and her cousin had kept pulling us under and i felt something grab my leg i mean it literally wrapped around my ankle and i was like chris knock it off like yelling at her cousin and a couple minutes later nikki does the same thing all of a sudden we hear all the screen and we look up on the shore chris is up on the shore he's like come on it's time to go her and I about beat the shit out of each other and ran like Jesus across the top of the water trying to shove each other behind the other because we wow, didn't know what the hell grabbed us. That's, wow. That's crazy for a, for a second there. I was confused. I didn't know if you were talking about Lake Erie or Paul's Dungeon. But that, 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 Loosen the basket. I was like, yep, nope, I'm done. Only boat by now. No, says the Indian man. Only boat. Nothing for you. Only boat. Only boat in water. Do not touch the toe. No. Wow. That's how that goes. We, we haven't done our mind Python post on Twitter in a while, Donna. I don't know. Well, <laughs> teach his own. I say to you, praise be to Allah. I'm here to speak about it. Stay in boat. Do not touch the water. It is bad. Don't do it. No, no, no. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow is the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the, uh, the nights that say me, um, going into July. What a segue. 4th. What a segue. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. I have a question on that. Do you know my yes. favorite one, line from one, the Grapes Sir Robin song is when he says he's not afraid to have his nostrils raped? His nostrils yes. raped. His nostrils <laughs> raped. Paul, that seems like something oh, you'd be so into. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, Paul says, we're <laughs> talking my language. <laughs> oh, I'll make sure I have to wear nose plugs next time I hang out with you. When I worked, when I worked at the veteran's home, I took care of a retired doctor who, you, who saw Monty Python while he was in the U.K., and when I used to take him down to dinner, he would bang a bedpan and yell, bring out your dad, as we were going to dinner. And I used to cry with laughter, and I love that man more than life itself. I'm not dead. Oh, <laughs> when you said <laughs> bang a bedpan, I'm glad that you finished with what you finished with, because I was yeah. going to ask no, a lot of questions. No, it was a clean one. It was completely like, unused, yeah. but it was just really funny, because he would ding it like it was a gong, and he'd go, bring out your dad, as we were going down to the dining room, calling everybody to dinner. Oh, bring out your dad. Segwaying into Bellwoods Brewing Company out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. They have an Imperial Stout, ancient cognac rails. The name of it, bring out your dad. Yes. I want to I wanna brew a beer someday and call it Crunchy Frog. I hope somebody gets the reference. <laughs> have you brewed a beer before, though? Hey, all right. Yes. Yes, I have. Oh, nice. Yes, I yes, have. Yes, he brewed a beer with a whole major company. Okay. Um, Rod, you said you had a question about the 4th of July? Oh, As yeah. Matter, no. oh, drink Here we go. <laughs> As a matter of fact, if you no, drink Wisconsin Brews, that cuddles the power is my brainchild. I thought it was why he was in a wind tunnel. Ooh, there. I was like, <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It's so hot in here. I got to have a fan. I'm sorry. Well, I, I was going to say it's seat. hot, right? So I was going to say going into this weekend where it's going to be like hot and humid. Yeah. And then you and have as much hair as I do. And like, some rain doesn't... and possibly some rain like we're maybe getting right. here in the Gulf Coast. So what style of beer are you going to prefer to drink during that period as we go into the holiday? Uh, yeah, lager. Probably, probably a lager. Probably, uh, I don't I don't yeah. like I don't care for lagers and mm -hmm. I, I really don't I don't right now. I'm gonna oh, I don't do lagers, I, I don't do anything thin or light I'm sorry, I just can't do it. I think Paul's taking his shirt off again. Paul, what are you doing, bro? I take mine off, but hello. It's, uh, it's Tom from PA <laughs> Brew News. Hello Tom, how are you doing this evening? Hey, we're going to overtime. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh I'm thinking of actually like drinking a ghost because it'll be nice and hot and humid. So a ghost would be nice, I think, refreshing. What was um, ghost? What's ghost, Roger? Are you saying a ghost, like an actual ghost? No, I meant a, I meant a ghost, but I'm on my phone. Oh. Oh. I was like, I don't know how you drink no, ghost, but if you can tell me, I'd love to try. How about this? Orgasmatron by Motorhead. 
I would a like goza. someone to make a goza with grilled pineapple. That would make me happy. A goza with 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 pi yeah, grilled pineapple would be interesting. Grilled I've pineapple. seen I've seen yes. regular pineapple, but not grilled. Yeah. Either a lager or a Euro lager. Urban artifact just did one with the pickle. How about a bourbon barrel aged imperial style? Well, I would say like we can we can session on Samuel Adams' <laughs> Utopia or heavy, something. Bro. What are you drinking, Donna? She's drinking a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, she's, no, she's drinking right. something else now. Direct from the bottle, right. Glenn yeah, Living. Yeah. That's what I thought, but I wasn't. <laughs> <Nice. first. laughs> we have no cash. time for like glasses I love or anything. Donna. <laughs> I told you to drink the Macau it's mine, and I'm the only one that drinks it. So yeah, I proper can do glassware this. is the bottle, the just for future reference. <laughs> yes, for me it is. <laughs> when I don't want to dirty another glass, yes. <laughs> She's taking Don small swings. Talent. Small swings. I think Don is going to need a channel. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, Rod is all about peer pressure in people's channels. Tonight he has tried to force Todd, myself, and now Donna to start channels. Um, I, I told. Uh, well, if I did start a channel, it would honestly be entertaining, and there would be good music. So that's well, there you delightful. Go. That is the opposite of Paul. Yeah, they won't let you do the music thing. <laughs> Well, they won't copy it. They'll stop it from uh, doing anything. You know, only if you want to monetize it. If you don't monetize right. it, you can play music. Yeah. More like a, yeah, yeah, exactly. More like a Euro logger probably this weekend. Euro, like, you know, like you bull, 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 My audio. bull heck, bolch, bolch head, I think, was it bull, B-O-C-H-O-L-T, you know, something like that. Well, now, I will say this. I do like a good Schwarz beer, and, but Imperial mostly. Um, I, I do like those. Is it uh, under eight percent? Then uh, fuck off. Yeah, exactly. I'm pretty much anything yeah. imperial. Um, yeah, anything Belgian. Puppy. Here you go, Belgian imperial. Oh, there you go. Barrel nice age or yeah. or or sours. I'm good. Yeah. So that will be one of my choices this weekend. But knowing me, I'll probably like you can take an down. imperial stout, and I'll be like, <gasps> but then you go, you barrel age it. I'm gonna be like, yes. So there but you go. Pure Donna are more for winter, right? I, to me, I think they're more. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. But here's the thing. <laughs> here's here's the the thing. <laughs> and this is very important. IPAs are one of the most overproduced beers. And just because everybody thinks their IPA is the shit does not mean it's not. Some are just meant to be palate wreckers. Some are not for actual drinking enjoyment to be to right. be tasty and to be a good mouthfeel and to be an actual decent solid beer just anybody makes an ipa and anybody does it any little way they want and it doesn't mean it's good because they don't always know a good malt to hop ratio or balance and it to me that drives me insane and i personally am a dark beer girl you can give me a dark beer year round and i will never complain you can give me a belgian year round and i'll never complain if it's actually wow. from belgium I like it. I like it. I'm I had the, I had the applause channel. sound effect. I sounded for you. Here. Like I, I love my yeah, right? and stuff, but you gotta, you gotta be real. Yeah, yeah. Amen, brother. Amen. Hey, yeah. I'll be your first subscriber to your new channel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no doubt. I, I drop, <laughs> Same I here. To Donna Same for here. a while on Twitter. She can Donna drop the Scotch girl. Here. Donna the Scotch girl rocks. You know, I'm in. I'll be your yeah. first sub. Oh, I did the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. I've got a bottle over there. It's 117.2%, and it's over yeah. 11 years old, and I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I just hmm. one who always thought, you know, the Imperials was weighted, you know, stouts for winter. But here's the you know, thing. Perfect though, nightcap, get, but, you, you but know, you I can, guess. You can, you can get stouts and drink them on a cool night, and they're stouts that are yeah. literally around, like, the 5 and 6 mark. You can just, just get a basic, nice chocolate stout or yeah. something refreshing and cool that's just nice for some. Because right. not everybody likes that IPA, and this is what really. I'm not, I'm not an IPA hurts. person. I like them, but I'm not a fan right. of them. I don't get them. Well, what makes me mad yeah, about I, IPAs hey, is just... that is that breweries, and this drives me nuts. Breweries insist on doing what they call seasonal releases. So, like, you get to the summer, and you have all your wheat beers, you have all your session, you have all your IPAs. Put some away for pumpkin. <laughs> right, you have all, right, and then you have pumpkin and yeah, pumpkin yeah, starts the onslaught pumpkin like, and, 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 like and late July, early August, and then you just have all this pumpkin shit. And it's like this is yeah. my point. If you brew a good beer, do not listen to distributors and your yes men. Listen to your patrons and your customers. What sells yes. produce that consistently so they can always have it when they want it? You will never fail in sales. 
you will never fail in sales. And yeah. case in point, when I was working with Bent Kettle Brewing in Wisconsin, dudes had an entirely great light wine up. They had, they had an amber ale, they had a Belgian, they had an American pale ale with um, smoked malts, and they had a dipa. And they had all these great things. And they were like, we don't know what to brew next. I said, brute, listen to me. I said, you've got some rum barrels. I said, you need to brew you a nice big batch of coconut porter and make it super rich. Do like an 80% robust and like 20% balder or vice versa. And then you brew that with the actual coconut milk and everything in it. And it's a Again? beautiful summer flavor. And then towards the end of the season, <laughs> brew a huge batch after you see how it does. Take half of it, leave it regular, put the other half in rum barrels so you have coconut rum for fall. And people will come for it and then just do a classic little chocolate freaking stout at like a, you know, around a 5.5, 6% ABV. So we did that and we served it. And the stout and the porter, we blew the kegs at every festival that we served at, including yeah. the Great Taste of the Midwest, which is one of the biggest. And like people raved about the Kapawi beer, which was my idea which was entirely my idea. And my thing is, is that that's just the point with this onslaught. When you're a small brewery, you do not have the means or the facility to allow mistakes because that's revenue from your pocket. That is beer that is not selling. And word of mouth is a huge way of reputation. Mm. Kapawi yeah, continues right, right. to and sell I, so I bad that they can't keep up with sales. They you're, can't keep up with sales. Exactly. So it's like, wow. my thing is, is that breweries need to take this into note because this is also one of my huge problems with breweries, like with Dogfish Head. I do like Dogfish Head. They do have some good brews. So do I. But my thing is, some of their things are way too experimental. Some are a little too thin and one dimensional and some are released too early. So the problem is, is when you make a crappy beer and let's be honest, namaste, I'm going to namaste the hell away from that. Because it's lemongrass and peppercorn. And the last of my knowledge, Bath and Body Works didn't ask them to make a douche in their flavor. So I'm This is my thing. This is where I get mad. Because when they do shit like that, what affects is, is a trickle down economy. So what happens is, is they can't get rid of it. They can sell it one time, and then once people taste this shit product, and they're like, oh, I got this dogfish head, but then it's this crap, right? right? The distributors push it down to your local mom and pop stores who end up eating it because they can't sell it. Their people it. know yeah. what's bad or good, and then it sits on their shelves, yeah. and they're the ones that eat the loss. So even though this huge brewery yeah. made one huge damn sale doesn't mean they're going to make it again. And the thing is, is that right. you, you, you hurt yourself doing that. You hurt yourself doing that. What I'm saying is go ahead and be experimental, but be smart enough to do it on a small batch level and keep that experimentation inside the brewery. Don't mm -hmm. listen to all those yeah, yes yeah, men. Make sure it's, it works, make sure it's yeah, a yeah. product you want to continually put out. Otherwise, sure. you're just wasting time and effort. But these big breweries can get away with it because they have all these investors and they have all these people that are guaranteed money. They have distributors in their pocket. They have all these, you know, all these connections that these smaller breweries don't have. And so my thing is, is when you get big, why do you listen to that peer pressure? Why do you just continue? Well, it's time to just do IPA is all fucking day in here. Well, okay, maybe <laughs> nobody wants that. Yeah. <laughs> like, when, okay, when I start a YouTube channel. I started you. for president. I told you you should have a channel. I told you. Right? <laughs> it's a president. And here's another novel idea. Quit releasing beers too early and telling people, we'll buy it now, but sell or age it for two years. God damn it, just give it to me when it's ready. Maybe I'm a greedy motherfucker and don't want to wait and have zero patience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Donald, I've noticed you with IPAs. You gotta get you a channel. <laughs> I've noticed with IPAs, you know, the ones I've tried, it, they're doing all these experimenting with all these different flavors, grapefruit, you know, orange, and, and then adding pineapple. And I say, okay, let's make an Indian Pale Ale, make it in like the Belgian style, like Lafrique from Green Flash. That is the perfect Belgian style India Pale Ale, which I can drink now, see, on any I given can day. Now, that because I've had an IPA that is from Belgium and it's a sour on top of it. So it's a sour IPA in Belgium. And to me, that is a beautiful summer drink. Right. Mm -hmm. So, 
Mm. Oh, Lord. I need to get more beer. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I just had my yingling, my third Yingling Black and Tan. I might get one before I go to sleep. That's a solid beer. Yeah. yeah some of the, um, some of the uh, like what Donald said, the IPAs that I find is, I'm finding some that are just, and I love IPAs um, behind Belgian and Stouts. Some of them are just not really putting the care in them they used to. Like, I'm getting a, a good amount of, like, over tangerine, so to speak. Like, yes. it, it becomes like a medicine type beer. Yes. And I don't know how many of you guys are seeing that, but then it's like a turnoff to even try some of the IPA. Like, if you're a novice trying IPA and you get some of these, you're like, you have one or two of those. You're like, I don't even want to deal with IPA. And you miss all of the other good ones that are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one thing uh, I agree with what I was saying. Yes, some of them are just like the palate wreckers. Uh, we have one here. It's uh, the Rebel Rouser. But I'm sure y'all probably have them there also. Yeah. The Rebel Rouser from uh, yeah. It, it, it's just it's Boston. just uh, a little Boston Beer Company, <laughs> right? Uh -huh. Samuel. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Um, yeah, it's it's just a little too much. I mean, a couple of them, and you've had your share. I mean, they're, they're, it's like an 8.4 or something. So, yeah, it, it doesn't take but a few of them to get your groove on. But, yeah, they're, they're just uh, – you, you can't hardly drink something after that, and it tastes the same. You know, just it, it is kind of oh. like the palate record. The one thing it's, that I – like those Northeast New, uh, New England-style IPAs now. They're all, like, juice with alcohol in them almost. Some of yeah. them are good. Mm -hmm. And some of them are bad. It's I'm not, well, I'm not saying they're not good, but they're it's, you know they're almost over the top. Only on but, Google can you get dropped from your own show. <laughs> <laughs> You're on there twice. But, but like most most everything else in life, um, everything's personal preference, and and the breweries out there, and everybody they 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 try to sell what sells. And right. why IPAs are so hot is because a lot of people like them. Not everybody. I mean, there's people right now in this chat that don't like IPAs or only okay, like certain. Come on. Let's they're just okay. They're it tolerable. It's the, it's or, or the hipster millennial but, revolution. Let's right. just be honest. Oh, I just can't well, deal with of, them every day. Well, that's the thing. But there's so many sub styles IPAs now, and it's, it's to each their own. Just to go back to like the Namaste thing you're talking about, Dama, Donna. Um, I'm not a huge fan of that, but I know a lot of people who love that beer. Dogfish Head was selling that so well, they had to make it year I, round. I have to tell you, I'm not a kind person. If I saw a friend <laughs> drinking that, I would probably slap it out of their hand and hand them $5 and tell them to try again. But the, but the thing is, is that <laughs> it's, that's, but that's kind of the thing we we're talking about earlier. At the end of the day, like everyone has different tastes. It's, it's yeah, all, that's like, true. It's, it's, it's true. Everyone has different tastes, but I'm going to tell you right now. I have seen Namaste sit on shelves in every area out here that I've been at, and they've eaten the losses and have not been able to sell it. So, okay, if you want to sell it out of your tap room, go right ahead. But but stop it, because out here you're killing these small businesses, and they're already struggling. Well, that might be true, but in other areas of their distribution, it sells well, and that's why they made it year-round. So it's but one of those things. you also have to understand, too, and I'm not arguing with you, I'm just interjecting, that there are distribute there are distributors who who are corrupt and you know that oh, you for know sure. that they will no, push, no. you know it's they will push their agenda it's business and they, there's and a lot yes, of exactly corruption. they will they will give people benefits and they will pay them for things and they will pocket things and just like you know just like with big farm when the reps go around hey I'll buy you dinner and here's this. that happens so, a lot yeah, of with tap right. handles and, and, and tap room across the country there's a lot right, of under right, right. stuff that happens it's one of those things. So, like, when it comes to when it comes to beer in general, everyone has a per like. Like you were saying, um, Jean, about uh, you know what what is everyone going to drink? Like, what's the mood or whatever? For me personally, I can drink a Russian Imperial Stout in the middle of summer when it's ninety degrees out, and I can drink a nice refreshing IPA when it's zero degrees out in winter. Right. I, it's, it's all it's how my personal want. mood it's, is. It's it, right, but, exactly. It's but like for somebody ice else, cream in winter. It, yeah. Speaking of IPAs, one of my favorites. Like, Oh, that's I, I enjoy and that. I'm not even Speaking saying anything bad about IPAs. I love good IPAs, but that's the difference. Well, I'm to, to, very picky with IPAs because there's such an abundance of them. Not all are good. So I'm not saturated with a lot of IPAs. Well, to go back to what yeah, Todd was talking about, the New England style is is that is the most popular style in the last six months to a year. Um, you know, it, it was pretty much right, right. all well, exclusive to New England because that's where it came from. So you're talking right, Massachusetts, right. Vermont, up to Maine and all that stuff. And now everybody's favorite brewery is trying to do them. Problem is, 
most of them aren't doing them all that well. Well, and, right, and, right. You're, and you're getting knockoffs of something that you taste. You go, well, right. I guess I don't like I've New England style. I've literally had beers that have had freaking hot salads floating in them. Not complaining. <laughs> I'm just saying, not complaining. I'm just saying, you like, some, you sometimes it's like, well, I just had this nice grilled chicken breast, so I'm just going to drink my salad right. and chew down the rest. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I can't, uh, there's, there's, one, low, there's one in so Wisconsin good. that has a full hop cone floating in the bottle and it's delightful uh, and I love it and everybody's like what do you do with the hop cone I'm like I totally eat it and they're like what I'm like don't you do the worm out of tequila are you retarded what's wrong with you it's a hop cone what what is it gonna kill you <laughs> like it's poison Ooh, that's you know, period. <laughs> there's just so many IPAs out there right now I mean it's just yeah, there's you so know, many styles of IPAs. You can do sour IPA. You can like do you can do a you can do a cross with IPA, a session right. IPA. You can do right. you can do fruit IPAs, New England well, IPAs. Now the, now the big thing is the, the milkshake IPAs. IPAs. The milkshake IPAs. I don't know how many of you guys have near it, but like uh, fucking milkshake IPAs are no. the jam for everyone. Let's well, let's take a let's take fruit rock, milkshake what. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not seeing that right now, right? Yes, I'm not right. Your milkshake brings all the boys to the yard because yeah, clearly they're there. Some callus, <laughs> we're, we're good with that. It, it brought us. It. It the He's same like, thing. damn right, it's better than yours. <laughs> <laughs> it worked, Rod. We're all here. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> I haven't heard I haven't heard that song in years. Wow! And for good reason, John. For good reason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, if you can all just do it like Peter Griffin, I'll just roll on the floor and roll around and laugh. Yeah. Now, now I have that singing through my head. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Better than yours, anyway. So. But not just IPA. Even sours, people are overdoing it too. Oh, and there's right. breweries that don't really make, make the sours sour. that are coming out even off balance on some of their stuff. Right. And, and you know what really ticks me off with beers is I really hate a lifeless beer. And you know what I'm talking about? Something that just tastes flat, like it's beeline, like you, like you didn't just kill it. You killed it. You buried it. You tried to resurrect it, and it's still lifeless. It's like a zombie. <laughs> like your <laughs> cemetery. <laughs> like, and not even in a good way. It's not like a Shaun of the Dead thing. It's just, it's just dead. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you don't want to go to and, <laughs> It's like, why are you dragging this shit out? I can't even stand it. I cannot stand the uh, lifeless uh, beer. I hate it when a beer hits my mouth, uh, and I feel like I could drink tonic water yeah. with a crushed aspirin in it and it would have more life than this. I mean, you want it to be crisp and refreshing like Will Ferrell in old school, you know, the way it's lit. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do it again! This way it hits my mouth. <laughs> like, uh, That's a classic movie. If anybody's watched oh, that yeah. in old school, you need to go watch it. It's funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's... <laughs> <laughs> you're probably wondering why you're tied with a rope. Your- <laughs> I like, I like, I like when his wife picks him up when he's streaking. Do you, yeah. you yeah. Can't, we're you streaking. Can't have feet open? Who's we? You're the only one running. We're streaking. Get in the van. And then he's like, "Do you, do you still think KFC's it's open?" <laughs> it's funny at the end though when he runs into uh, uh, what's her is it what's her name the actress that was in it um. Kind of the freaky. Uh, I won't say Jennifer Jason Lee, but it's not her. It's uh, the brunette at the end. She's like, yeah, uh, we're having a party Leah, this weekend. Leah Remini. No, Leah no. Remini. Yeah. <laughs> Leah. <laughs> she um. She was in the movie too. It's, I think it's Remy. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's Remini and Remy. I don't. Leah Remy. It Sorry. wasn't Jennifer Jason Lee though. Oops. It was somebody. Else. But it was the brunette in the grocery aisle. He's like, we're having a party. Like, I know you're you're talking to somebody that was just referencing Gene Turney earlier. So like, not even you know that many people would get that. So. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, anyway, we're like, oh. he's like, I'm back. <laughs> he kicked the other person's cart. Back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. oh man, that's a great movie. Yes, yeah, it is. Gentlemen and Miss Donna, I'm going to shut it down for the night. I'm getting ready on an early day tomorrow, so it's been real. I can relate. Hey, I was, relate. Before, yeah, yeah. before you leave, before you leave, John, what was the deal on Jay's show last night with the malt liquor maniac? 
Uh, I don't know. That guy was a riot. All I know <laughs> that he was he was doing this. He was doing some flexing of muscle. I said, you know, we're talking about beer. We're not doing wrestling, you know. It's like he was like a like a wrestler, you know. It's like man, you know, yeah, malt liquor is this, you know, motherfucking this and. Damn. Best part of it all is he actually had a mask on. Yeah, he had a mask on. I said, man, this is uh, he's uh, about, the 40. He's he's about we're reviewing Malt Liquor. We're not talking about Malt Liquor and body slamming somebody. Lucha you know, Libre. We're not doing a suplex or a figure four. He's all like, I'm rocks. Billy D doing the old bear commercial. Yeah. <laughs> So I was. I was I'm a superhero. <laughs> I'm Lando Calrissian. Everybody watching this was all about silent. No one. I laughed hysterically because I was, I was trying to be polite, <laughs> you know, be respectful. But I was laughing. I said, "Man, what the hell is this guy doing?" You know, <laughs> you're right. But I would have gone there. I've been like, "Look, uh, bitch, your mama made some cookies. Get off the internet and get on your little." You know, jam right. jams with the footies and go to bed. Exactly. <laughs> and yes, I would have called him a bitch. Yeah. So, was anyhow, that was an interesting video last night. And, he had a 12 uh, minute run or so for yeah. Jay Buddha. I want to buy, like, this ain't comedy. It's really sad. Yeah. And then there was a comic <laughs> about, you know, that's the perception. Your grandma's that knitting think you a of, noose right now. You know, who drink this sort of stuff? You want the juice box? No. But, yeah, yeah like I said, it was, it was a riot last night. He was funny, but then again, it was like, all right, you know, this is. It was is... funny for a moment, and then it got. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah, it sounded, so it was like, it sounded okay. a bit awkward. I didn't see it, but it sounded a bit awkward by the sounds of it. Yeah. Well, if you go back and watch the replay, it's pretty funny. Yeah. I, pretty, I think Jay was getting a little perturbed by it, but. Yeah, I thought it was pretty yeah. well, we, we, we were like, okay. Comedy, that's yeah, I'll have to go thing. check that out. I mean, if you're doing malt liquor, things like that are going to happen. Malt liquor. Right? <laughs> Label lock. I don't, I don't uh, know why. Oh, what? Am I supposed no. to go over and bring him his hair and all of a sudden he's Rick James? Yeah. <laughs> Rick James, bitch. Rick James, <laughs> bitch. So, it was, uh, yeah. it was interesting last night. Let's put it yeah. that way. <laughs> so. That's pretty much how it goes. I think we're going to make a look at that one. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they have the hate that they do, and, and uh, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. Dave Chappelle did a, a parody of Rick James. And oh, you never saw Rick James? Where he's sitting there going oh. like this. <laughs> <laughs> like Rick James, like he's so cool with the grill, showing it off. Going, <laughs> that really helped <laughs> me. That was the best show on the map to me oh, yeah. when he did the Rick James. Oh, no, he did before stuff. that. When he did Clayton Bigsby and he did uh, oh. Prince. He did Prince. Was... Yeah, Clayton Bigsby. Yeah. <laughs> so like, he did yeah, Prince. He, he made his pants. He made his nah, pancakes. No, when he did R. Kelly, I'm going to piss on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, when he had Wayne Brady on. <laughs> when he had Wade Brady on. I'm going to fuck on you. Brady was like, is Wayne Brady going to choke a bitch? I'm not a violent person, but I have a choke a bitch. <laughs> Dave Chappelle show was hilarious. Oh, great. Uh, best. Eddie That's Murphy, great. fuck your couch. Buy <laughs> another one, you rich motherfucker. Hey, Charlie Murphy, <laughs> what the flat fingers say to the nah. fingers? When he was doing that, when he was doing that stunt and the girl was in the car and she over here dancing like this and her titty popped out and then yeah. he replaced <laughs> <laughs> that was the old was script like, commercial. I miss I miss Chappelle. Out. When when he gets hosted, when he gets hosted SNL, I was like, yes, you yeah. know, I was like, love yeah. it, loved it, loved it, yeah. you know. And Lauren let him do what he needed to do because he knew Chappelle's right. a genius. So you know, you know, Lauren Michael. So I was kind of happy about that. So it, it says a lot. SNL when SNL has a lot of great skits on it, but one of the things I've always loved about them is they have always been. A diverse crew they've always embraced diversity and encouraged all of their actors regardless of race based on talent and that's why I respect SNL yeah yeah, yeah. All, all I know for Chappelle show it's it's gonna be coming up on 15 years since that started and that's crazy that's hard to I know yeah, that's yeah. crazy right. what well, did you ever see right. the, uh, the, uh, the Jordan and Peele yeah, P uh, Key, so, Key and Peel. But he did it. Key and Peel. Yeah. When he did the teacher skit, mm -hmm. and he was oh, calling. Yeah. He was calling the kids names. He's like, "A Aaron." Yeah, A Aaron. Like, do you mean Aaron? Aaron. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> he's like, be nice. Be yeah. Denise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. That was a good you know, one. You know, you know, Jake. You know Jacob from from Twitter, Rad. You know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about, Mr. Grimes. Yes. Me, him, and Jenny did this whole big long spiel on that whole skit on SNL for the Jeopardy, and because I out gift him on there because I pulled up the best gifts. Like we just had like this huge gift for. He changed his name to Turd Ferguson for like two weeks <laughs> and made the Reynolds the paper Reynolds profile, and I loved yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been, I missed that one. My gifts are usually pretty much on point on Twitter. Oh, that was so fun. That was so fun. <laughs> that was too much fun. Sure. I was yeah. like, sure. 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 <laughs> but to be honest, my personality is more like Sean Connery. I'll take anal bum covers for a hundred, Alex. <laughs> what is a dog? Oh, yet, what is oh, it? Yet. Hey, Donna, better yet, the rapist. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, a rapist instead of therapist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Like, he's like, going to I shall seize the day. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh those are I still, I still cry. I'll take S words for a thousand. It's swords. <laughs> it's so great. I just, I love it. It's like you can't go wrong with it. You There's so many them. great skits. Like, and oh my god, that delish dish skit with um Alec Baldwin. When he's sweaty talking balls? about his sweaty balls. Yes! Sweaty oh, balls. Hey, 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 my sweaty, my oh sweaty my talk the talk balls? They're yeah, so the much shaping. They they they're very moist. They Can I put your balls in my mouth? My balls are here for your pleasure, ladies. I still die over that every time. <laughs> so good. But That's when what happens when you leave your balls on the oven too long. Christopher Walken did that hotel room. Yeah, seriously. I could not sit through that skit for five seconds without dying of laughter, and God forbid if I was drunk because it would just never happen. I would, I would be the Jimmy, I would be the Jimmy Fallon of SNL, sniggering and laughing drunk? through all of my own skits. You get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, we just met. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you not, Do you not realize I drink whiskey straight? This is why. Yeah. This is why I look forward to Thursdays. I, I equate a bottle of wine and I drink it one time. We're a little more. We're more, a little more loose than Jay's show on Wednesday for sure. Yes, so. this is why I look forward to Thursdays. I can be myself. I can laugh, have a good time. This, this is awesome. So. Yeah. Hey, if you don't laugh in this world. Yeah, do you want to hear a funny? One of my dearest friends in the world paid for um, University of Alabama Crimson Tide, and I carry a Crimson Tide mug everywhere and drink from it. So when my friends see me, I'm always like, roll tide. And they're like, what? You're from Ohio. I'm like. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's not as bad as if you were doing with a Michigan mug. They really had those. No, no. I still like my OSU, too, but. I'm comes the time. I always have a problem when they play each other because I'm always like, <gasps> if, you know, I'm happy who, with whoever wins, but it's still a tear. I'm always like nail biting and yeah, gut same thing with oh, same thing with the Iron Bowl. You know, I'm I could go eat, but if Auburn wins, I'm a bit happy. Alabama wins, I'm like, yeah, who gives a shit about this football game? Nobody cares, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I gotta how say, that I'm from is, Ohio, so. and I don't think I've been a Cleveland Brown fan in my freaking life. And I yeah. crack up because when people are like, who do you like in football? I'm always like, ugh, you're going to hate me. And they're like, no, I'm not. I'm like, you're going to hate me. No, I'm not. You're going to hate me. I'm like, New Orleans Saints or Seattle Seahawks. Otherwise, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, I hate you. And I'm like, I just told you that. <laughs> Did, you to warn you? Did you not understand the words coming out of my mouth? So, yeah. <laughs> suck it. Hey, Joe. Hey. No. Is Joe there? Okay, Joe's, Joe's gone. There. Hey, guys, listen, let me go ahead and shut it down, all right? It's been fun, guys. Thank y'all. All right, man. Have a good Have one. Good night. Peace, John. All right. Later, y'all. Peace, bro. Take care. I was trying to send it to Albino, but I don't, his thing won't show up on my Google+. I was going to tell Joe to send him a link. No, I, like, I'm cracking up because... It just, this is my first time doing one of these, so like all the names are changing just down at the bottom. And somebody is like drunk and home, and I'm, I'm kind of digging that. No, it's, <laughs> it's drunk, drunk and one. Drunk and one. He is drunk at home, but it is drunk, drunk and one. one. <laughs>
Cheers from Texas. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. If you're gonna be drunk somewhere at home, is always a good choice, though. That's a good. That's well, no, it's, it's yeah. Do you have albino on yours? Drunk one. I, I I'm seeing him in the chat. I'm seeing him in the chat, and and uh, he said you didn't like him, and then you said you were gonna send him the link. I can't I can't find a and, and then, button uh, to pop it up. I'll put it on the chat now. See if anybody pops in. Like it a little crazy. I, 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 I thought of doing that, but that's not my business. I was just going to stick it in the chat, but that's not the way you roll here. And so it wasn't my business. I don't even... What? <laughs> Actually, it won't let me cut it. Well, uh, well, I mean, Donna, Don, how did you get here? How did you know that... See, see a lot of times... When well, you... because for one thing, I'm friends with Paul and I'm friends with Rod. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, no. Well, uh, Rod sends me things through my email. Uh, like I'll see he's doing something, and he'll, oh, well, he'll send me um, like a kind of private invite or whatever. Yeah. And so well, I'm able to get in. Right. But other people, other people just post it in the link and in, in, in the, uh, the the comments, and so you can just click into that. But that's not the way Rod rolls, and yeah, so I didn't want to I'm do on that. My phone, so I don't know. Oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But uh. I guess Paul sent you the link though, Donna, right? Or yeah, yeah. Okay. He said, yeah. He was like, I'm. I think I'm. This is the night I'm gonna do the chat. I'm like, well, I'm friends with Rod, and he's like, well, I'll invite you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, I just gotta get home from work. <laughs> Look at this lazy, lazy, lazy pit bull. Just being lazy. <laughs> right? Can you put it yeah. in the chat? Can you put it in the chat on your drunken? Mine won't let me cut and paste it. I think what? Can I, I will try. I am not good at this, but I'll try. Just take the link and okay. highlight it and cut it and then paste it like, yeah, and like put that comment. Okay, yeah, where is, I, I where is everybody so, uh, in here from, by the way? Why don't, you, uh, why don't you cut him down? Like you I'm from Texas. Down. You said what, Todd? <laughs> so where, you where's down everybody in the group from? Down. Well, you know I'm from down Kentucky or Cincinnati, so I'm just down the highway from you. Right. I have my uncle lives in South Point, Ohio. Todd's in Indiana, down off over see, from Louisville. See if that works. Did you put it in there? I don't see anything popped up. And how about now? I don't see anything showing up on the chat. Oh, oh wait a minute. Okay, yeah. Well it, Oh it's we should have got a Google, like, yeah. got a Google Plus, that's why I can't do it. I did on Google Plus before. Uh, it, it, it's showing it like in ghost letters. It's it's not like in like dark letters. I might. Uh, yeah. Um, I don't. What are you guys trying to do? Send a uh, yeah, albino. Send like the, you send like the rhino. We're, we're yeah, there's no albinos allowed here, Chad. <laughs> Sorry, no albinos. He's not on Google Plus anymore. He said. I'll well, send him via mind. Facebook, and we'll see if yeah, it works. That's good. That's your word. I regret this. It's this is this is all on Rod, by the way. All of this. <laughs> But Joe, I love this. Right? I Joe, love this. Joe, Joe's in Buffalo. Okay. I, I am. Oh, yeah. It, 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 it's still, hey, yeah, I don't have. It. I don't do Facebook. Oh so. shit! What? I just realized I drank all the beers I brought in here, which means I'll need to grab more. <laughs> oh, horse feathers! Grab me one while you're going. <laughs> I mean, oh, what are they saying, Texas? Sensuous. Okay, wait a Sensuous minute. Sensuous up. Give me another beer. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hey, that was funny, guys. Would you prefer whiskey or would you prefer anything from my beer corner? Where's your beer stuff at? I, I, think, I, think I have a beer corner right here, and then I have more in the fridge, and then I have my whiskeys up here. So what I gotta are you get me a beer corner. Are you feeling whiskey? Or are you feeling? Yeah, saw the camera. Saw the camera down. It's a little blurry. You just oh, picked sorry. up that dogfish head today. That sequence, right? No, I bought um I bought well, it yesterday, you buy but you I drank most Twitter. all of it, so I'm down to the um Hawaiian shirt and I drank my uncle Jacob's stuff from Avery Brewing last night, the bourbon barrel aged. That's made to drink in the winter time. <laughs> oh, wait. Don't care, I drink it last night. <laughs> it's seventeen percent. It's gotta be at least at least thirty four degrees out. <laughs> Don't care, I drank it. I sure did. The beer I Nazis. Drank it. <laughs> exactly. I drink an IPA in the middle of winter. I drink I drink stouts all year too as well as Belgians. How oh, dare oh, yeah, God. yeah, that's good. Well yeah, y'all were talking about those beers that were like sixty dollars for four or six beers or whatever. 
I can brew five gallons of beer for seventeen dollars and seventy cents. Yeah, it's so a dry stuff. It. There's right. nothing really fancy about it. Right. You know, you get you get to wait on it a bit. You know, you get to wait on it a bit. Right. But five yeah. gallons is is two full cases. Yeah, right. uh, almost right. fifty like, beers. Right. Almost fifty right. beers like, for under that. twenty bucks. Yeah. yeah. Look, I gotta, I, wait a minute. Let me see what my sister got me for Christmas, and I cracked up because I was like, first of all, this kit has no flavor, and second of all, I'm gonna have huge issues. Look what she got me. She's thoughtful, but. Ah, wait. That's okay. Not I started out with that. Yeah, but wait a yeah, minute. Yeah. I also, I, I also know this kit has like. When it comes to flavor, oh, it's probably like the American Light Ale or something in there, right? So I'm yeah, like, get some malt, yeah, you, get some you, you get a, right? Like I'm like, I have to go to the homebrew store before I deal with this. Yeah, you gotta put some more DME in there. You, you gotta, you yeah, I never, I never used just what was actually in it. I went out and got all the other stuff to make it better. Right, I'm like, I'm gonna have to yeah. deal with this. Thanks to you, I gotta deal with this now. Yeah. Now I gotta spend more money because yeah. of you. <laughs> hey, if you want, actually, I got some recipes, Donna. If you want me to email you some stuff. So I got recipes for that. There you go. But well, usually my beers are like ten to thirteen percent that I make out of it. Nice. Okay, nice. Like, nice. Looks, here's Daddy. here's what I want to do. I want to get together with some friends of mine that have better equipment, and I want to brew a really nice quad. But then I want <laughs> I want to age it in <laughs> in, in, in in cognac barrels. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's nice. nice. Right. Like if I can get somebody to do that, I'll do it in a minute. All right. Damn straight. I just had one of our brewers here. They just sold their uh, bourbon trace barrels off. They right. made a. Well, they made one a of my one of my really good milk friends milk. is one of the head founders of the Cleveland Bourbon Club, so he's friends with all of the distillers of any type of bourbon in America, and they have private barrels all over, and they select mm. their bottles and everything. So when I went down and did the Kentucky Bourbon Trails, he was like. Drop my name so you can do private tastings. He's like, when you go to Four Roses, I'm good friends with Jim Rutledge. Tell them that. So I went there and I did that, and they took me back for a private tasting, and I got to sample some really good stuff for free because yeah. of him. And I'm like, nice. oh, yeah. I'm doing it, doing it. No wrong with that. But um, I took a couple yeah, really no, nice no, bottles sure. home from Four Roses that were entirely Jim Rutledge hand signed, dipped on nine yards. I was like single barrels. I was like. I'm good right now. <laughs> I'm good right now. But then Four Roses had to turn around and treat him like shit. So now he retired early and then went out on his own. And he's talking about, you know, building his own distillery. That's going to take a minute. But he's already got the backers and everything. And I'm all like, I'll go there and buy his stuff. I'm going to tell you right now, that yeah. freaking beauty I had over there that was a 10-year freaking aged, 35% rye mash OBSK. Wow. Only you can buy it. The roses is great. I want to be oh your neighbor. God. I killed. I killed that in no time. <laughs> I killed that in no time. Like that's that. That's yeah, that. You get to move a little bit. Come, 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 come a little northeast there, drunken. <laughs> Are you looking to adopt? <laughs> yeah. It's dead. Although Todd and I could do I a Todd and I could do a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll, 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 I'll go back in a minute. Like when I was down there, I literally don't even know why I survived because I literally just went to all these different, you know, distilleries and drank bourbon all day long. And then I would go to like against the grain and eat one good big meal. I would eat like chicken wings and like beer cheese. Right, he made it in. And then, and then I would just like drink a shit ton of beers there and then take more beers back to the hotel. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm drinking bourbon and pounding beers. And then I'm going to just drink a bottle of water and get back up and start over tomorrow. <laughs> with a cup of Whoopee. coffee in the morning. <laughs> How far is that? But then I made the mistake of going to Buffalo Trace. And Buffalo Trace makes actual blended bourbon cream with real local cream. Oh, look at the baby. And, um. Don't call me that, Donna. They're still in line with us. <laughs> <laughs> we I'm can sorry, see I didn't, I, I didn't know you were wearing diapers already. <laughs> Albino, Albino probably diapers already. That's Proper right. peri care, front to back, front to back. Albino. <laughs> Do you need some desitin? Uh, okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Ron, how far, how far is it to Barstown for you? The, to, for, to Barstown? Yeah. 
I think from here it's about like two and a half, three hours maybe. Where is it? I don't know. I've never been to Bardstown. I tend to think where it is on the map. Isn't it like down past Lexington or Louisville? No, it's not that. No, it's not that far down. It's, oh, it's only okay. about an hour. Probably like an hour, hour and a half or something. Only, okay, yeah. I was gonna say it's only about an hour for me, so it's probably yeah. about the same for you. I, I know. I know. For for me, where I'm at, to Louisville is a five hour drive. Louisville. Wait, would you say Louisville? <laughs> Louisville. <laughs> Louisville, man, you know. <laughs> He's not from around these parts. I'm pretty sure Louisville. it's pronounced Louisville. Oh, oh shut up. Here, here, here. Look, at, look at my American face. Don't, don't care. <laughs> You're talking to the girl that calls Monopoly Monopoly and Jalapeno is Jalapenos. So uh, Jalapenos like, is where it's at. My, 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 my zero fucks given factor is always at zero. Nice. <laughs> Well, September 8th and 9th is when we had the Cincinnati beer fest. There'll be another 500 500 beers here. All right. How many of those did you drink, Rod? I couldn't get to the 500. Well, I usually volunteer, so I'm usually pouring as well. (laughs) Excuses. That's all I'm hearing. (laughs) I can walk up to any tap and just go skip past the line and get right anything I want. Oh my god. Nice. It's like put me in a shitty yeah, booth where nobody will come yeah. and I can just there's, there's be there's like forty right. people in line, you just walk up, you're like, that's right, bitches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey Brad, you have to send me information on the uh for the fall one. Yeah, I will. If you wouldn't we might do the one I think Saturday afternoon. And so that's like one to like five on the square or something. And then you can just hang out and probably still drink because it'll be outside, it'll be easy. I don't know if you want to do the afternoon one, uh-huh. yeah. but I'll send you it. I'll have you down. I don't window. care. <laughs> yeah, just me up. Up. <laughs> it's a fun. It's a fun time. I mean, uh, if you can't catch a buzz in four hours, something went wrong. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last two years, we've actually had a little bit of rain. Great, because then it became just volunteer drink for free, which worked out nicely. Nice. You, you don't say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I had some dumb luck. I, some dumb luck <laughs> I always seem to luck out with beer pretty nicely, Joe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I went to my local bottle shop and I brought in a twenty dollar bill and I came out with four cases, guys. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Well, let, me, let, me like a, let me post a four-minute video to rub it on your faces. Let me do that real quick. You see this, uh, <laughs> you see this four-pack of Chill Wave? They gave me seven dollars to take it away. Oh. All right. Store credit just to take it off the hand. You still got the Chill Wave sitting with you, huh? Oh, okay. you're like, oh, I got to pay five dollars for a four-pack. I'm like, you son of a bitch. And no, it's not your fault, but it is your fault now because you're well, posting it online and rubbing it in. Well, Todd, do you get West Six down there from Lexington, Todd? Yeah, yeah. So I picked yes. up. I, I, I just got a four pack of their Belgian Triple Nine Percent up here, six ninety nine. There he goes rubbing it in again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There he goes. That's <laughs> hey, hey, is is West Six the brewing company that got sued by Mag- like Magic Cat because of their logo? Oh, I don't know. I mean, they do have kind of some things on there. I can see where Magic Cat may go after. Them. No, yeah, they, they, did, they, they were the ones that were sued by Magic Cat. Yeah. Okay, I was just about I was just, years ago. Yeah, yeah, because oh, right. they have the upside yeah, uh, the upside down nine. That's what Magic Cat said. They took our nine and flipped it upside down. I'm like, settle down, Magic Cat. No one wants to rep- <laughs> yeah, right. shitty yeah. beer, okay? There is a number. Right. Oh, there is yeah. a number. Like Jimmy yeah, Hendrix right. said, if six turned into nine, I don't mind. You know what, Magic Cat? <laughs> Suck a bag of dicks. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was, uh, about two years ago, I think. <laughs> Ain't nothing here. Ain't nothing like hearing a girl saying something like that, you know? We hear it enough from Paul, but this is a whole different experience. (laughs) Maybe it's different, man. (laughs) Maybe it's legit because I'm a female. I don't know, but I'm just saying for reals, magic cat can suck. (laughs) They they can always suck. Like not even a five dollar whore, like a two fifty in a back alley and hope you don't get crabs because bitch you ain't getting lobster for two fifty. I'm just saying. 
Oh, you never know who's going to show up, and it's always going to be different stuff. Oh, all right. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you so much. Jesus Christ. So, yeah, Donna for Brad, and I'm going to be your neighbor because I'm going to be your neighbor. Apparently, if I can bury him, whatever the fuck. Call 9481. When I have Donna, that's what I'm talking about. I'm going to say so. It's going to be like Armageddon. <laughs> Donna and who? Donna, Paul, and Tom on the same show. Yeah, I'm not going to be here for that. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Well, I was gonna get my thing, so. We all make it as quick as hell. I, I really, I truly hope that I'm not that offensive. I mean, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I just don't want to see Tom without a shirt. I, I'm good with that. I don't need to be a part of that. Yeah, right? It's, you know it's okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know how big his nipples are. <laughs> I don't want to know how big his nipples are. I, the the pressure to talk about the man's nipples. I might be like, I might say, why are your areolas bigger than mine? But otherwise, he might be okay. <laughs> I'm going to need another beer, boys. <laughs> You're going to need all the beer. Just all of it. I'm going to need a time I'm out. Right. Out. <laughs> Whoa. Well, Chad, Chad, Chad finally showed up. Hello, Chad. Uh, <laughs> said he was a puppy right now. Yeah, he's uh, taking a page out of Paul's book. Paul had the, the kittens, and he'd be like, oh, I'm going to throw the kittens in the beer review. I get all the. No, you don't get all the views. No uh, views. I'm not going to be the throwing the dog in the beer reviews. You should uh, have other plans for the. Yeah, oh. here's, here's my baby. Show him, show him licking his ass, which he looks yeah, like he's, he's doing. doing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Big okay. time. Oh, I mean, let's just be real. Everybody's <laughs> jealous because dogs do what they can. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> like, oh, my God, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't think you are. No, I don't think so either. No, I, think that's no, I am. No, no, I am. No. I take you no. at your word. I believe everything. No. That if I believe everything comes out of Paul's mouth, I'm believing everything comes out of yours. Oh no! Oh my God! Do you really believe everything that comes out of Paul's mouth, for real? All of it, hundred percent. He has never told a single lie in his life. Like I laugh at him so hard that I cry. Mm -hmm. I can't even like. I've had days where I'm like, "Don't make me spit my coffee." That sacrilege. <laughs> Not many people realize Sasquatches have jokes. That's why I was so disappointed tonight that Paul was uh, is somewhat muted by his uh, issues. I think he's pissed off because he had to get off the show or whatever. Oh, he, right. he but also, also he's, he's probably a bit tired, too. Tired of us not being able to hear him. <laughs> that could be part of it. Also a little sad as well. <laughs> It sounded kind of funny though. It was like we were all like in a room, and it seemed like Paul was outside, like trying to yell yeah. get in because he was like so low. Yeah. The, the best analogy I could make is Paul, you are Tom. He did not like that, but I was telling him that's <laughs> half the time when Tom, Tom speaks, it's like he's coming in and out. He's like, ah, oh, it's like you're at a drive-through at a fast food restaurant, and you don't know what's going on. You can't hear him half the time. Oh that's my gosh, I would totally come back as Beavis and be like, <laughs> thank you, please drive through. But, well, t well, Tom will have like these two minute spiels <laughs> where he continues to talk, but like you hear maybe a third of it, and then he's like, "Right, guys," and I'm like, "I have no idea what you just said," because I can't. Yeah, hear that's it. very frustrating. That's very frustrating. He fades sure. away. He fades away from his, his uh, speaker all. The time. Yeah, because he turns his head. Right, he turns his head all the time. Right, right. Yeah. I thought that was just, I thought that was just in high school. He's, he's animated. <laughs> he's animated. <laughs> When he gets anime, he starts shaking his head. He just back and forth. I don't know. I, I just I just know that every the three times I think I've been in the chat with Tom, like half the time I can't hear him. Definitely a mic issue. And then Paul had it tonight, so that's it, it. Could be a support issue too, because I don't think every time these things can support an entire group of people at a certain number. I think some of them kind of just fade out. Yep. But we go. I, I, I don't know. I noticed, we can go I to Japan. Came, we've been. At, we've been yeah, like when before. I I noticed when I came in, and this is my first time doing one of these, that I could hear Paul when I came in, 
But then you don't want to hear Paul after everybody it. else replied, <laughs> I couldn't hear after that. <laughs> I see. I, th I think it supports up to ten. It doesn't support it well, though. <laughs> That's the problem. Uh, it, it, uh, yeah, 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 I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, it, it, it'll run ten, but some, sometimes, and then you always get that guy that comes in. He's got the huge echo. I'm, yeah. I'm and I, I do these things with another uh, another group and. There's one guy that comes in, and when he comes in, it's just it's a fierce echo, and it's like, dude, turn your shit down, or get some headphones. And, and he's just kind of right. known for being or that guy, you know. He's just echo guy. Maybe yeah, echo it guy. could be too, like if a bunch of different people are on different Wi-Fi formats. Not all Wi-Fi's are strong signaled as the others. Well, uh, see, and see at be best, I know we're all we're we're all from the U.S. Am I correct? No. No, Chad's from a, a place called Canada that no one really thinks about too often. Oh, well, okay. Well, I mean, but this side anyway. Okay, the, the other chat that I usually do is most of them are, are in UK. Most of them are ah. beer, beer brewers. And, okay, and yeah, I've never, so, I've never done which, that. Which is like still that. baffling to me how we can all get together in, in one chat room. And they're on the other side of the freaking world. They're six hours ahead of me, or, or they're in New Zealand or whatever. Yeah. You know, it's eleven crazy. hours ahead of me, and, and it's right, right. crazy like that. It. But we're all pretty much in the same area. Uh, we shouldn't have any trouble. Yeah, I thought it was some of the somebody UK guys with no issues as well. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in O H I O. Google Plus. Has... I work in I work in O H I O. That's too bad for you, Rod. But well, technically, I work at the house most days. But my company says it's yeah, yeah, he's like, all of a sudden, he just pops in. He's like, "That's too bad for you, Rod." I'm going <laughs> yeah, to narrate yeah, right. your life in a deep, sad like, tone. That's like very monotone. Like Rod, are you depressed? <laughs> <laughs> are you taking chances? You usually have to pay for counseling like that. <laughs> Pretty soon, I'll buy you a pay your father. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> any more any more segues rod into awesome topics beer topics no more no more beer topics well there's always beer topics but but there's not always segues that are made sidetracked away from it yeah. <laughs> i mean that happened his last segue was amazing mm -hmm. yeah no i had nothing really talk about the mic that say me but i did use that last time you never have anything to talk mm -hmm. about. You always do this. I don't. I bring on everybody else. I just sit okay. back. Like, Where's Freddie so Cooper at tonight? I don't know. He was supposed to be older. I think he's at home doing some stuff. You had to get a new shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> he went from Freddie Krueger to Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to be on tonight, but I guess he got caught up on stuff. And then Tom, Tom was stuck working, shelling out beers at work. Oh, poor guy. Jay is poor life. Jay's probably watching. He says he's going to sleep, but he's probably watching. The next morning, he'll comment. I should have just came on. I was up in bed watching you guys. <laughs> if you don't get up at 2.45 in the morning for no Look, reason. look, look, Rod. Here's an idea. Start playing some music and, and see how drink quick drink they get attention. Do what, Thomas? <laughs> I said, listen, listen, Rod. Start playing some stripper music and see how quick he pays attention. You're like, guess where I'm drinking it? <laughs> Like some Kellis uh, milkshake. You were singing it earlier. Right. No, look, and bro. that's crazy that because, like, head. Boris, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it's hilarious that I was singing that because in the car on the way home, I was listening to Led Zeppelin and the and the faces. So yeah. <laughs> Are you growling at me? <laughs> Are you speaking I don't know. to us, is good it, is, sir? <laughs> is it growling or purring? <laughs> fine line. <laughs> There's a fine line. Just saying. Did you guys it see could be movie? it could be Earth a kid or a Wolverine. It's a coin toss. <laughs> <laughs> I saw some dude. I guess some dude at Toronto Blue Jays game threw some beer on the field or whatever. He got banned from every major league stadium now. Pretty sure it wasn't that last year he did that. Maybe in the oh no, they the Blue Jays have that every year. Well, he had it last year, but they just came out with the ban today about the guy not. He can't go to any major league ballpark. 
Yeah, he's a he's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and by winner, I mean racist loser, but he's still a winner. Right. Right. Because here's the thing like, it takes a pretty damn good amount of attention to get banned from every baseball because I've heard some of the most outrageous, horrible shit in baseball ever. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, we start throwing beer around. You don't waste that shit. No, you number one, you don't waste it. You don't throw it at the players. It's, it's, it's oh, not yeah. great. Right, right. Right. That's a combination right. of you're an idiot. Yeah, you're, you're right. throwing like, and in Canada, that that fucking that that beer was probably like eighty seven dollars at least for that beer. Right, it was or something. right, right. Eighty seven American dollars. No. Did he get his money's worth? So, I mean, I don't. Know. I, I I don't know if it I don't know. Seventeen fifty. Yeah, seventeen fifty to fucking throw it on the field. How about no? How about right, you? Right, right, you know, exactly. And it was probably else. and it, and it was probably not even like a really great beer. It was probably just like a oh. common regular Labatt or whatever no, mixed with beer. like a spittle. Oh, Hang it's on. probably that bad Budweiser they get. What is it? Prohibition or something? You guys get up there? That's like horrible from Budweiser. That's oh, the non alcoholic. No, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Literally Rod, nobody wants that. Rod, I tagged every single Budweiser format on Twitter and cussed them out royally. Uh oh. Literally. Uh-oh. Literally. <laughs> and had a bunch of people say, You are my hero. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it more than once. <laughs> the one time when they attacked craft beer and they were like doing that commercial, We're not oh, a passing a fad. Wait yeah. a minute. When they said, When you're not a we're not a passing fad, I said, Bitches, we ain't no fad. Um, Egyptians were home brewing, so go fuck yourselves. You're the passing fad. Why don't you just go squeeze a fresh urinal cake, which is exactly what you fucking do, you piss water fucking motherfuckers. That's exactly what I said to them. Uh, or, or they could just nice. buy up all the good uh, breweries, right? Yeah, you stop buying too. breweries too. Right? Yeah. It's a fad. Let me just get like 87 of them and I, I'm hung up on right, them. Right. In our right. like, that's what I said. That's what I even said to him. I said, hmm, you talk about how craft breweries are a passing fad, yet you all hang around them like the vultures trying to constantly tempt them with huge sums of money so you can take them over and then have their freaking um, hop farmers and their distribution in your pocket. And, and just take it over. And you make sure that you go to every beer festival and make sure that you always have a tent there and sometimes jack up prices so smaller brewers can't be in. But you're not worried about us, right? Big middle finger. They can suck. <laughs> Big middle they can suck a bag of dicks. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They can Co- suck a dick as big as King Kong and Godzilla's combined. Choke on it. Die. Come back. Get. Get fucking choked out again and come back and get choked out again and come back until they finally just get tired and give up and never come back. And to be clear, there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of that. Rod, where do you find these people? Where do you find these people, Rod? I, like, like Mitt Romney, I got binders. Yeah, Rod attracts a certain kind of individual. What kind of in- individual? We have no idea. We're still searching. <laughs> I'm a good person. I'll tell you what. I honestly believe that words like homeless and veteran should never exist in the same sentence. Yet on the same hand, I have zero sympathy for anything in Bev. Just saying. Yes, ma'am. Hey, drunken one. So you're near (laughs) Austin, right? What's that? I'm sorry. I was I was doing the start start spangled banner. (laughs) What did what did Boomhauer say? You're near Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm uh, just north of Houston. You're what? Uh, uh, just north of Houston, a place called. Hey, bring on my man over here. Are, 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 are you near Austin, Texas? <laughs> Am I what? <laughs> are you near Austin, Texas? Do you understand the words oh, coming out of my no. mouth? <laughs> I, I am now. I'm not sure that was twenty hours. How drunk are you, bro? <laughs> Listen, his name is just not a catchphrase. It's not just for laughs. It's hey, hey, wait, 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 wait a second. Can you can, can you hear this? Can you hear this? <laughs> <laughs> I need you to turn uh, it upside down, down the drunken one. No. Oh, was my window? Yeah, they're running each other's window down. Let me roll it up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, here, let me turn this up for you. No, I was, I was saying, how far are you? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, live, uh, I live about 40 miles north of Houston, uh, a place called Cut and Shoot. 
of all weird how far, how far names from, from, from you. Hey, do you want to hear a funny uh, fact that I know about, about Texas? Two and a half hours. About two oh, and a half yeah. hours. Not yet, Donna. I'm talking to Rod. <laughs> there's a there's a brewery that is in there's a Donna, Florida. Texas. That's what's funny. They're they're brewing a beer to go with tacos, which I love freaking tacos. Every beer there's goes a with lot. tacos, right? I was just saying, there's a this lot of beers. Like, what's wrong with that? This Wait a minute. Come on. Who doesn't love tacos? Who doesn't love tacos? I'm sorry. Who doesn't love tacos? Who doesn't love tacos? What is like, the name what, of the brewery? What, 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 what tacos, beer are they right? brewing to go with tacos? Like, are they are they brewing, like, a tequila lime beer barrel to go with tacos? Because... Tacos and beer, like, tequila. I'm just... I'm just saying, like, what are they, like, who doesn't love tacos? Seems like they were brainstorming hard to figure this one out. I don't think, I don't think Donald Trump so. like tacos, because he said if Hillary wanted to be taco truck everywhere, like, and that's an issue. Okay, well, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking about a man who needs to not be on Twitter, and I've tweeted that before. <laughs> <laughs> I've literally tweeted that before. I'm like, I would feel like a hundred thousand more percent comfortable if the president of this country who isn't an embarrassment already would just stay off of Twitter. Yeah. Thank you. That would be I would be super happy. Just call spring. And then wait a minute. No, no, no more. Here's here's my favorite, Rhett. Here's my favorite. My girlfriend posted a funny about Donald Trump. Remember when he made the tweet about uh, Meryl Streep attacking him mm. at, at, okay. At the the actress or whatever, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, I was totally attacked, right? And he was like, but the way he worded it, it sounded like he was attacked by the award <laughs> yeah. ceremony itself and not her. Yeah. So I totally laughed at him. I was like, first of all, his misspelling and his grammar was so incorrect that I didn't know who attacked <laughs> him. Like, I didn't know. <laughs> And so, like, it's really funny yeah. for that because, like, you have all this staff and you have all these people and you think you, at least one educated person could put something down <laughs> rational think. and direct and properly spelled for all of that money. So this guy got mad because I put fact. I don't have a college education, but I know how to speak better than the president of the free country of the world. Right. So this guy got really mad. He's all like, oh, you live charged little, 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 and all this stuff. And I said, Give first of ball. all, sweetie, I said, first of all, sweetie, I'm a gun toting American and I own two AR 15 rifles fully loaded with all the ammo. And I know how to fire them and clean them and use them. And I was like, secondly, bitch, before you go and call me a libtard, I'm a libertarian. And I believe in less government and more freedom to the people. I said, where I don't hate Hillary, I'm sad she didn't win now because I knew my party wouldn't win. And it's sad to me that you have somebody with zero experience and so many bankruptcies running a country into the ground and is more concerned about, you know, issues for the wealthy than they are for the poor. So, you know, don't say you're sorry now. You talk about how your family is, all these retired military. My family's entire, re entirely retired military. And I can guarantee you now, I have a special needs sister and her benefits are gonna be cut. And so when I say to you, go fuck yourself, I can't say it hard enough. Yeah, well, there you go. Nice, nice. Like, I have nice. friends that are, you know, they have, they've been talking about libtards and stuff. I said, you gotta quit labeling people. Yeah. You don't even know me and you jumped over with my shit. And I said, this isn't even my post. So that shows your rationale right there. Yeah. Stop taking the sound bites, do some actual research on stuff. Oh, this right. is the internet. That's not exactly. how this works. <laughs> right, exactly. Everything on the right. internet is true. They Everything on the internet. Everything. I've been kidnapped by aliens, and I'm pregnant with a subspecies, and I'm probably going to have a 12-liter pup rate at this point. Like, Sounds like Paul's house. <laughs> <laughs> He's not here to defend himself. Come on now. No, he doesn't need to be here. He wouldn't that just that out, right. he wouldn't. No, <laughs> usually whenever I say stuff up, Paul just agrees with me because it's usually 100% accurate. Here's the, uh, the, <laughs> the taco beer. So the result is Taco Revolution, a 5.6% ABV Saison that Cartwright describes as light and crisp. The French hop used in the brew adds citrus notes that accentuate the flavors and tacos without being overbearing, expected to make the spices and herbs really pop. I think they're applying. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, who cares me like tacos? Yeah. Who wants to drink their taco? 
and just put it in the blender. Are we talking about actual <laughs> tacos? Put it in a no. It's the beer to go with tacos. No, I was asking. I was, I was asking Chad if he wanted. You said he wanted to drink tacos. You would think you would have a. I was gonna tell me. Chad's gonna throw it in the ninja. <laughs> mix it all so together. You, you would think with tacos it would have uh, maybe some coriander, the the cilantro flavor. It, it is coriander. Oh, I don't know if that's involved in that beer or not, but but yeah, that that's like uh, pico de gallo. It, it is the the onions, uh, the the tomatoes. Uh, uh, okay. I'm, 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 uh, there's, there's, there's a whole lot of brewing going on with coriander and ginger right now. And I just, I, I have to say personally, not a fan. But you like Belgian? You get coriander, ginger, and Belgian. Yes, yes, but it's not overpowering. Do you like people it is, Yes, like well, like what's that one that Peter Nevada are... just did? I see people saying they didn't think it was that good. It was like too much. First of all, have you had that before we even get into Sierra Nevada? Have you had that peach IP from Sierra Nevada? I have not had that one. Not too peachy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> are you saying it wasn't peachy? Too? I'm, I'm 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 saying that I'm not a fan. I'll be classy. I'm not a fan. But if I were to go the route, I would him. say that I would rather puke it in a shoe and leave it for someone else to walk in. <laughs> Has she been on my show before? <laughs> Donna's got some pretty good analogies. I give her that. That was like, like a version of Paul. I, really I don't even like. It was terrible. Like I don't even believe in dumping beer. I believe that if you don't like a beer, save the rest of it, use it in a recipe for cooking on the grill, marinating, whatever, because, you know, you're fine. Okay. It'll, okay. it'll work out. But my thing is, is that when I tried that, I was just like, mother of God, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I hate it. Yeah, I hate like, it. Like, I don't even you... know what else nice to say. It was, it was terrible. First of all, it, it, it was... It was dead. It was flat in my mouth and dead. And it, the 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 peach flavor, like <laughs> was it, it wasn't like, 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 blah, like, like just blah, just blah. It was it was like we're I we're talking about not, beer. Remember, Donna, stay at night. We're talking about beer. <laughs> you guys are like, a joke here. But I have, I've had friends. I've had friends complain right? about the severe the Sierra Nevada ginger as well because yeah. you know they did that ginger. So I'm like, it's like I've had friends go, it's called, I believe right, trip, yeah. right. And I'm like, okay, I understand you do this Deadpool. beer camp around the world, but here's my yeah. thing again with big breweries, and I'll say this a million times, not everything you make is gold. Not every person that is your yes man should be listened to. Taste it your damn self and go, should I put this out? And then, okay, no. Yeah. <laughs> right, make the decision a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. For for it makes it's it to like, the market. Yeah, for it makes it to the it's, market. It's essentially the same as you and your drunk buddies being out, and everybody telling you that everything tastes good because their palate's gone to shit, and then you see that lonely drunk girl across the room, and you're like, "Oh yeah, you should totally do her," and without a condom. No. No. There was never a take one for a team ever, especially with a beer. Paula disagree. Multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, that's my wife. Wait a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, happy anniversary. <laughs> BT yeah, Dogs. Right? <laughs> well, anyway, on well, that taco beer that is actually available. Yes, sir. Please tell us more. It's, it's available it? in cans in Texas, so if you see it, you'll have to let us know, but it accentuates your taco. Brand name again, Rand? What, what, what's, the, what's the... Re it's Revolution from like Independence Brewing taco. Company. Yeah, okay. I know Revolution. Okay. Right. According to them, you're not allowed to eat tacos, though, with any other beer? No, this just this one is <laughs> Well, is that kind of like Dogfish Head? Um beer to drink while listening to music <laughs> like are you lot are you not allowed to listen to any other music <laughs> it's, it's, the brewers association beer. says you can't so you gotta listen to them yeah they put these the little brewers. stickers on you the label you gotta listen to the brewers association <laughs> right. they have stickers on the label to tell you what you can and can't drink so i mean i'm just gonna listen to them <laughs> right. i have no i have no soul i can't think for myself i'll just listen to them 
I still need to find out what happened. Yeah, right. 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 I'm going to right. Cincinnati that sued Walmart over yeah. a fake craft beer. Well, that guy number one summit. is the biggest fucking dummy I've ever seen in my life. But if he gets okay, a little who, money, I'm, I'm sorry. Repeat that last statement you just said. We, please. we the guys in Cincinnati here sue Walmart over their fake craft beer because it's not oh. actually done as craft beer. It's the uh, I don't ever go to Walmart, but whatever they sell it. Yeah, under, I don't either. Um, and the guy got a lawyer, and the lawyer lost a lawsuit against Walmart because they were saying they were selling craft beer, and it wasn't because. The way it was brewed, it was not done by a crap brewer. No, this guy lacks, uh, what is that called? Yeah, common fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Can you really blame him when you got a woman that sued McDonald's for well, stealing hot coffee on, her, on, on herself? Exactly. Oh, I spilled yeah, it on yeah. me. It's still hot. Oh, it's burning my skin. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Hot. Just just drop the A and put the apostrophe and say America, and there you have it. There you know, America. I, I hope the judge threw that right out and was like, just looked at him and was like, are you fucking serious right now? Like, we have all these other issues. <laughs> Bring it in. <laughs> There's right. so many craft beer at Walmart that's not craft beer. Get the fuck out of my courtroom, you idiot. <laughs> I don't need to deal with this dumb shit. How about you open your eyes and okay. look on the fucking thing or go on the internet where it tells you everything, most of it wrong, but you still right. find like, uh, like, like nobody has tweeted that story a million times about how it's not crap beer. Yeah, it's just I think there's, there's a Why couple not guys just look up in the mirror room. like King can like look up in the mirror like Kingpin and just be like ah, red steel. <laughs> <laughs> Where, where's the water? <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh, a yeah. shot. <laughs> just drink it. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> It's like there's a couple of guys doing like Home Depot and Lowe's on two by fours because they don't actually measure to be two by four. I do fucking can't. No, this is insane. Oh my lord! The fucking world right. is great. Oh, people are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Can't ever get away from factor, so. No, just people. Yeah, don't I guess so. logic's yeah, out the right, window. Right. People <laughs> don't bring logic or common sense into anything anymore, and they, they yeah, kind of like yeah. Donald was saying about the whole the woman with the with the McDonald's and the she won her fucking millions of dollars. It's like right, people, like bring like, common sense not understand. Right, exactly. I'm gonna give you two phrases that I use quite on it. Honestly, very very often because I work in the healthcare industry. And, and it applies across the board. Common sense is not a flower that grows in everyone's garden. Common sense is like <laughs> deodorant. The people that need to use it most don't wear it. I swear to God, <laughs> I, 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 cannot, I cannot describe That's it very well better I than like that. that. <laughs> and, like and, that. And the other thing that I've posted is, 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 and this is true, I don't hate human beings, but I also say, Remove all the warning labels off of everything because I'm an honest believer in natural selection. And, and here's the craziest nice. part. If we had that, we might not have the POTUS. <laughs> oh, 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 I mean, watch that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Grab him by the pussy. Okay, bitch. I'll grab him by yours because you have the biggest pussy on the face of the planet. You are so butthurt sensitive that you are oh, yeah. you are worse than a gay bitch who has been ass fucked and then used and somebody just on your face and now you're crying like the whore that you are. Don't talk about Paul like that. <laughs> we, we have a female Paul. Paul's been recorded. I don't know if it was a female Paul or a female Tom. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, like I've said, a, I've said a million times to everyone everywhere. I am the owner of my own body, and nobody that has ever been given birth by a woman, and no one that has never had a period in their life is ever going to tell me what is available to insurance by me, what I can use for my own body, what I can do to my own body. My body is my own possession, not yours, not anyone else. I don't care if my natural double Ds turn you on. It's not my fucking problem. It's not my fucking problem. What is a problem is when you put a pen in your hand while you're holding your cock with the other and you try and tell me what is available to me and my necessity means, because it doesn't matter to me if I get raped and impregnated tomorrow. If I have to take a coat hanger and take care of myself, I will fucking do it. If I need a sack of ninjas to fucking 
fucking kidney punch me and fucking punch my ovaries and throw me down a flight of stairs, I will fucking do it. The only thing you are doing is removing anything safely for a woman. And not only that, but not all forms of birth control control just pregnancy. It controls hormones. It controls so many other issues. And you have no right to say anything, especially from a man that says, grab her by the pussy. And another man who says, I cannot dine with anyone who is not my fucking wife. If you are that insecure in your masculinity, if you are that much of a douche, you have no right to speak for me. And all you've done is remove any safeguards for my life. So here's my biggest thing to you. If rape by pregnancy, be it from a family member or a random stranger on the street, is an act of God, which you will not suddenly fund, which, by the way, most abortion is not funded by the government. It is not. Right. Okay, let's get that clear. The most funded cause for men, one of the most funded cause for men, is for limp dick pills. So if my rape and pregnancy is an act of God, so is your limp dick motherfucker. No offense to you, gentlemen, but that's the truth right there in a nutshell. In a nutshell. <laughs> and that here. segues into <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> I'm just saying. I can't argue. That I, I mean. don't. I don't. Uh, this is what I've said to men. If you've sat in locker room no, and talked right, about a right, woman, though. and yeah. she's and she's young enough to be your granddaughter, know the fact. And I've tweeted this. Know the fact that when you locker room talk this woman, be it she's got great tits or a nice ass or whatever you say to your guy friends, know that you are you are setting not only a precedent an example, but you're opening the table to sexual harassment. Of somebody that could be your daughter, your sister, your mother, your niece, what your wife. Like, think about that for a minute before you go and open your mouth. And I get that we all look and we see and we're like, damn, that's a beautiful human being. But I'm going to tell you right now. I look at men and women both and go, that's a beautiful human being. But... On that note, the way I judge people is by their intelligence, by their mind, by their heart, by their soul. I don't give a fuck if you have no tooth in your head and no hair on your head and society considers you undeemable. If you're a decent human being, if you would risk your life to save another, if you would give your last dollar to a homeless person, regardless if they're going to use it for drink. You are a good person. It is not your job to judge another human being. It is not your job to feel superior because this is what people don't get. We are bred in this competitive society where everybody's supposed to be better than someone, do better than someone, and, and just, you know, I make more money than you. I have a college education and you don't. And here's the thing is that it doesn't matter because in the long run, life is not guaranteed. Everybody's grave is the same size. Everybody's urn is the same size. It's dug just as deep and just as wide. Nothing matters because no one gets out alive. So can you just be human and support each other and if you see a kitten in the road save it and if you see somebody kicking a dog you tell them that's wrong or beating a child that's wrong like it's really not we are instilled with the right of good and evil from a young age and you cannot tell me that you cannot look at right now and go this is fucking wrong because it is and and i'm not I didn't vote for Democratic, and I didn't vote for Republican, but I do know this. If you divide your fellow man, if you pick, if you pick government over your fellow man, there's going to be a huge problem, even if your government is wrong. You have to find a common ground. You have to find a way to speak to these people, no matter how illogical or fucking retarded they are. You have to find a way to say, look. 
there's going to be a whole bunch of people, innocent children, women, your daughters, your mothers, elderly, everything, everyone is affected by this. And if we don't come and stand together, we are totally fucking fucked. And I can't even say it clearer than that because even though I'm not Republican, and I, and trust me, I'm I'm a 47 year old woman. I just turned 47. I'm a 47 year old woman. I am a single white female who is heavily heavily taxed because I don't have a spouse to take care of me, and I have no children, and I'm paying for everyone else's kids and their school taxes and county taxes and all these taxes that are thrown on me that even though I make what is considered considered a below living standard if I don't claim zero I pay in because I made the choice to not reproduce or procreate and mind you, not that it's any of your business, I've never had an abortion either. And I've never taken birth control in a day in my life. I am also one of the few percent that falls into the tax of Obamacare because I can't afford, I can't afford insurance. I get taxed heavily, but I will still take that over 50 million people and veterans and my special needs sister and my dad who's a retired veteran and my father my real father who's passed away I'll take that over anything I'll pay that a thousand times even when I can't pay it because you know why you can't take blood from a stone but if we don't come together shit's gonna go down so bad I'm just saying and I know a lot of people have like really negative attitudes but we may not be able to do a whole lot with what we have. But I truly feel like one small deed of great love can make a big change, a big fucking change. And I feel like it's fun to argue with people and it's fun to argue sometimes and I know I get that because in the human conundrum, we have this slight bit of cruelty in us where it feels good to be a little bit superior and it feels a little bit to be better than someone. But don't say that to people. Don't say that to people. And learn humility because here's the thing. You can say what you want about race. You can say what you want about ever. Women are the lowest treated <coughs> species on the planet, period. I don't, I don't care. You know what? I feel bad for women in general, but I feel extremely bad for Middle Eastern women, and I feel extremely bad, bad for black women. Because not only are you black, but you're a woman. And not only are you Middle Eastern, and you have no right to an education or anything, but you're a woman. Having... Being a male is so much strength. It's so much strength. And the only way to get anywhere as a woman is to still prostitute yourself. And you look at the beer scene and you realize all these women are like, I'm beer and boobs, I'm beer and tits, I'm beer and pussy, I'm beer and this, and ah, oh, here's my boobs, and here's me, and ha ha. And okay, that's great, but know something. Know something. Have some knowledge. Have a heart. Have a soul. Be forgiving and understand that no one's perfect. We are so divided on so many different planes. And I'm not even racist against men. I'm a tomboy. I'd rather be fishing. I'd rather be shooting guns. I'd rather be drinking whiskey and beer. I've been a tomboy my whole life. <clears throat> I have been. But I'm just saying, like, people need to really utilize this and really realize this that our world is going to pot and even with the lonely lowliest of enemies we can find common ground because everyone has a mother and father 
somebody goes to some type of church, be, be regardless of Muslim Sikh. Definitely a thing. Uh oh. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> what happened? Son of Santa Maria! Segway that, buddy! I can't hear you! <laughs> I can't it's hear you! Uh -oh. Did she hit her microphone? I... <laughs> no, I didn't oh, do yes. that! I didn't need to. <laughs> Unmute! Donna, we can't hear you. <laughs> Good Donna. thing I'm go pee, I guess, right? <laughs> do, do, do what? Yes, please. Donna, we can't hear time you. time to go pee, right? She's going to be busy for a while. Donna. Is that Bino and Joe here? I just got no, back. I don't care. What's been going counting. on the last 10 minutes? Yeah. We can't, so. hear, we can't hear Donna. Oh, what, what were you guys talking about last 10 minutes? Anything? She was talking about stuff, but she, her mic cut off. Donna, your mic is muted. Donna? <laughs> hashtag zip it. <laughs> what happened? It says hashtag zip it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed oh, it all. I don't. I don't know what's happening. I. I. Is it something happened? I don't were, know. Were you? Were you gone? Juicing your mimosa fruit? Yeah, for about the last ten minutes, <laughs> I wasn't. Wasn't here. I, I, I was <laughs> juicing. I was juicing all the mimosa fruit. The mimosa fruit's the greatest. All the mimosa fruit. Just. I mean, I have a couple mimosa fruits. Donna, we're you're using the ninja. Mike is muted. There she is. Is it working? Now it's working. All right. I'm just saying, people need to quit choosing governments over people because we even have common ground with our enemies. We all dine with our families. We all celebrate our holidays and our religions together, regardless of how separate they are, regardless of how great the divide is. And people need to realize that. Yeah. Exactly. Isn't that uh shouldn't be a right or wrong or whatever. It should just be human still with a right or wrong and yet people still do wrong by each other. They wanna be right. Do you understand? There's a huge We are only Is this a uh, was this a beer there topic? Is, the old, you know, there is, there is a huge the difference. Of there there is a huge difference between you. being That's right. It's lit from beer. There is a huge difference between <laughs> listening to be one. right than actually listening, and a lot of people don't get that. They listen what? to respond. It's, they don't listen to be correct. They listen to respond, as opposed to just shrugging it off and saying, "You know what I mean, like." Of, Right. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Right. That, exactly. I mean, it really is almost that simple. Right. Almost it's that, that simple. simple. It's like, it's it's that simple. Like, how would you feel if your mother, some guy just walked up behind her and pinched her ass and, like, yanked her bra strap till it came undone? You'd be pissed, right? You'd be pissed if a guy did that to your mother, to your daughter, to, like, whatever. Like, that's my point is that we're all people. Can you just treat each other like people? Can you just honestly appreciate someone for their differences because we're all flawed? Can you appreciate people for their mind, heart, and soul? Because your body is just a shell and it's not permanent, so get over it. It doesn't matter if you believe in life after death. It's the fact that everything is energy, and when you die, that energy goes somewhere. So, you know. Except I, always tell, I, always, I always tell people, if you just listen to me, your life would be a lot better. Do we have some kind of argument over the? Do we have some argument over the taco beer or something? I'm confused. I came hey, back I after like ten minutes. Oh, uh, yeah, taco beer. Hello. Like, that was a while ago. Wrong with tacos. Ever. Oh.
Yeah. Hey, I, I came back. Right Donna back. was muted. I have no idea what's happening. I don't know where. I'll, where I'll be right back. Hey, Ryder. Hey, Rod, ever since I watched your videos, my life's been better. Your life's been better, see? Just listen to me. Mine has been about the same, but I appreciate the effort. Oh, I think Drunken wasn't taking some sound device from me, so yeah. Well, here's, a, here's the thing, Rod. What happened is your your reviews have improved my life, but then Paul negates all that. So. <laughs> I thought, it, I thought it might have been a Canadian yeah, review, another Canadian reviewer that may have done that. No, it's pretty much all Paul downhill. <laughs> I don't make people's life go downhill. Okay? Well, not you, someone else in Canada. <laughs> a Chris? Yeah. Yes, yeah, the Canadian. In the basement? Yeah. yeah the, the guy time. who has a twin on Mount Rushmore malt videos now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that got a little heavy there. So, uh, Segway, what's next? Where'd we go from here? Who knows? Yeah, right. What happened to Taco Talk? Well, I, 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 thought, know, like I, I, was, I thought there was a huge argument over the taco, uh, the taco beer, and then I came back and it got really deep, and I'm confused. I don't know where I am. <laughs> thought we were in a beer chat. I was wrong. Only it's for a, a minute. Funny, right? It's a funny thing. When alcohol gets involved, things take turns. <laughs> that's well, that's well, crazy. Well, that's 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 gets involved, maybe. So what you're saying is when Paul's here, he's always sober as can be? Yeah. Exactly. Was Paul here earlier tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah kind of. I'm pretty sure thinking. Paul passed out tonight. That's why he, he disappeared. Well, his, his, he, he was having issues with his microphone. It was uh, very low. I, right. I, have, I wanted to send something right. to Paul. He did, he he did have microphone issues. And um, from what I gather, he's working like many hour shift without a day off for a while so oh he's cranky too that would make why, why me a little so bit angry. that's why he was so angry <laughs> paul can get over it he's a grown man kind of <laughs> i uh i found the picture <laughs> <of Paul. laughs> yeah, yeah like, right man yeah, you, you wear things very nicely yeah <laughs> kind of <laughs> I love Paul. I love giving him shit. It's great. I work. Yeah, I no, work at no, gaming. I work at yeah, gaming right. convention once a year. I work at gaming convention once a year. A classic gaming convention once a year. And I had a guy that brought in one of the old sorcerer talking, talking pinball tables, and he was pissed because he had the high score. And he goes, "I just heard you got the wizard," and I was like, "He was like the wizard special," and I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, don't beat my high score. And I'm like, dude, I'm like fucking 12 beers in. I'm not going to beat anything at this point. Calm your tits. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like started crying. I'm like, seriously, I'm I'm like 12 beers in. And I have two beers in my hand right now on my break. And I'm, I have one cent on each side of each of each flipper so that whatever hand I'm not using, I can drink the other beer with, so I wouldn't worry about it. I haven't played pinball in so long. You know what's great is, is on my Wii, I have so many, like, really old classic pinballs games saved in there. I have, like, yeah. Aliens Crush and Devil's Crush and shit. Most people ever like, what? And I'm I like... I got pinball on my PS3 on a game. Yeah. Or 360, rather. Right, right. But I think Devils is one of them I have on there. You yeah. know what else oh, I heard no. you have on your game, my on my ex on Thanks, my God. ex on my old Xbox, my entire arcade is stocked from top to bottom. I have every single thing ever classic by anyone made ever, but I love it that so many people try to beat me in <laughs> in my arcade, and I'm like, yeah, no, it's not happening. Back in like, the day, you can down, you down can you can play me in a million new games, but you can play me in old games, and it's not gonna happen. Rod, I heard you uh, have a certain game for your Xbox called NHL that uh, Dan beats the crap out of you all the time. No, no, he does uh, not. Uh, that's how we play. No, he doesn't uh, play me. He doesn't play me since then. I was like just learning the game. I just got it. Ah, is that excuses up here? Am I hearing excuses? <laughs> wait, wait, that... what, what system do you have, Every Rob? time I ask him for a rematch, now he keeps ducking me. Oh, that's because he's a boy. Like, am I hearing excuses? Okay, um, Rod, who's the team you play? On what? In hockey? 
Yeah, in hockey. Who's the team you play? Oh, I don't. I just pick any team in NHL 17. I just grab any of them. Back in the day when I used to play Sega, I was always the Red Wings, though. All right, all right. Uh, Chad asked what you have. You have Xbox 360 or Xbox One? Uh, no, I, I got a PS4, and I got a PS3, and I got an Xbox 360. Okay, you're lucky, Rod, because if you had the Xbox One, you'd lose to a blind guy. Yeah, but in hockey? In anything. <laughs> well, he's can he, he, he left out the list. And <laughs> he's a like, blind albino, but he is Canadian, so that makes up for his blindness. <laughs> he he like, I go back to the 2600, dog. I've been playing games ever since they came out. 2600. Well, Come well, on well, well, wait a minute. Let's, I, I used to dial up what? touchdowns on the television. <laughs> dial up touchdowns. <touchdown. laughs> I can oh, smell man. where your player is going to be, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I am the Coleco and Coleco Vision. <laughs> oh come on now! Oh, shit. I've got I've got some really old school games in there, um, <laughs> like some serious old school games. Like, hello, you're talking to somebody that's born in 1970. <laughs> I used to bust people up playing the Mattel football on the way to school on the school bus. <laughs> <laughs> Look, dude, I had the Dracula arcade with the freaking big freaking batteries in it. <laughs> Yeah, you can't find Rod, anymore. And Rod I, was, I, I was Shinobi. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I was Shinobi. You were a smooth <laughs> operator. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, he played Shmoo. That's everything. hilarious. <laughs> you remember that old game Dragon's Lair back in the day in the arcade? Oh my god, I remember Dragon's Lair. Where that came out, everybody was like, oh my god. You gotta play this game, and it was like, what is a dollar? <laughs> I remember uh, people used to be lined up for days trying to yeah. play the game. Let's play Spy yeah, Hunter, Tempest. Sounds like sounds like yeah. what nowadays, I love. Todd. In 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 my, in my front, yes, look. In my in my front room. In my front room of my home when I lived near Strongsville. Yeah. Like like just a mile within, like I was on the border of Columbia Station Strongsville. I had centipede. I had dig dug. I had I had oh, punch dig out. Dog. Yeah. I had punch out. Miss Pac Man, Joust, oh, and I had Ultimate Quarter yeah, Will Come at Three. Wait a minute. In the actual tall standing arcades, two player versions. But did you have Defender but, and Stargate? Wait a minute, wait a minute. So my buddy, my buddy Matt came and he rigged them so you didn't have to put quarters in them because they were the actual arcades. He he rigged it so you didn't have to put quarters in them and you could sit and play free play nonstop. So I had friends come over all the time and they're like, oh, we're going to totally beat you in this. And I'm just like, all right, just just so you know, in Ultimate um, Mortal Kombat, I always play Shiva. And I'm like, and just so you know, I'm going to kick your ass. And I would, like, every single time, like, without question. It didn't matter how many people played me straight in a row. And I could be pounding beers and playing with one hand and talking to, like, 20 other people. I'd get the dude up in the corners, toasties, toasties, finish him. And I'm like, yeah, take that. And I would do it all the time. And it's great because it's one of my... It's one of my playing with the kindergartners. It's, 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 no, 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 no. I'm playing with I'm playing with people my age. I'm playing with my brother, and I'm playing with like all kinds of people. And what I love is is that I go and I work this gaming convention every single year, and it's all classic arcade games. It's all it is, and systems, and yeah. and pinball, and everything else. And and we're in Cleveland, but we have people that come from as far as New York. And, and and way down south because we're the only ones that do it. And people come from all over. And I see the same people every year since it started. And they're always like, we have such a great time here. And I'm like, that's the whole point. We want you to. We want you to enjoy the things that oh, inspire. inspire. Bomberman. Right. Like, there's so many of them. Like, right, right. Like, like, in... in 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 my little classic Wii, I have the original Donkey Kong. I have the original Mario Brothers. I have Laser Blasters. I have the original Castlevania. I have the original Zelda. I have 
all these great old games and pinballs. And I sit around and I play them all the time. Because, <laughs> you know, I'm a girl. Oh, Contra. That was my game back in the day. <laughs> Double Dragon. <laughs> How many games you got on there, Todd? You got paper, you got paper, I've done you got the Sega, paper, too. You got, you got Paperboy on there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a game for my Wii that has Paperboy Burger Time. Um, who was the, the beer one? Like something Tapper? Uh, yeah, oh, the root beer, beer Tapper. Yeah, yeah, root beer Tapper. Root beer, and then yeah. there's um, okay. what's the other one that root I love so boy. much? Um, don't look at the conversation on. The no, side. no, 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 no. I'll tell you the Run. one that I love. I'll don't tell you the one I love is um. <laughs> Don't shoot, don't shoot the food. Warrior oh, needs food. <laughs> gauntlet. <laughs> Love gauntlet. I used to like playing NBA Jam too. He's on fire. <laughs> that was great because you played four. You played four people two on two, and the losers always had to keep paying, so we would just keep crushing. Hey, people. Hey, there it is. Todd's got it on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And of course, my phone's running 5,000 damn updates. <sighs> iPhone? No. A Droid? Droid. Uh, my what iPhone's you, running. Whatever, whatever arcade game you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What was so the, the one with the, the what system? Was the best book? Who was the one with the basketball game and the dudes would start fighting in the game? That was a double oh, something. Uh, yes, double yes, dribble. Was talking about. No, um, not double dribble. That was a different one, but there was one where. No, it was like a uh, rival. Like double rivals. dribble like sounds rivals. like a penis yeah, problem. Like tri- I think it was arch rivals. <laughs> our, our uh, rivals. My, my well, there favorite you hockey go. game there back then yes. was, uh, was Blades of Steel. Oh, yeah. Do you remember Blades, Blades of, Steel? of Steel? Yeah, that was great. Remember ice hockey where you had the skinny guy, the medium guy, and the fat guy? That was, that was what it Blades was. Blades of Steel was awesome. Yeah. Yep, Blades of Steel uh, the best was like a game huge ever. upgrade. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, like, in the early Saga days where you actually just had NHL hockey and, like, the puck actually actually had physics to it, and it would like flip on its side. I'm like, oh my god, it's the greatest thing ever! Like the puck's moving. What's happening? <laughs> yeah, growing up is how I grew up. Oh, one of the best games. The mall ever. arcades were popular places back in the day, where everything was done. No, I just crack up because Rod's all like Paperboy, and I'm like, Burger time. <laughs> Burger time. Oh, Burger time. Centipede, millipede. Yeah, Pac Man. Miss Pac Man, Miss Pac Man, baby Pac Man. Right, look, I played that out. stupid Punch game, Primal Punch Rage, out. where you're like, pick out like an ape like character or like a dinosaur like character, and then you like defeat the world. The first time I played Primal Rage, I played it all the way through without seen more than two lives and defeated the entire game and my friend sat and watched me and I'm like yes and the sad part is is like I really wish I could appreciate it more but I was so drunk at the time I didn't even care <laughs> I was just like eh, it happens <laughs> well now now kids get scholarships on video games right Donkey Kong, where the princess is actually the main character trying to save Mario. Yeah. Right? I think the biggest competitive game that we had, though, back then was Track and Field. Like, you would compete against everybody. Track and Field, that. yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, you could almost come to fights in that game against people. People have pencils. People bring pencils so they can hit oh the Oh, my God. Quicker. I love They're... Robot Chicken's take on that exactly. game when they. Robot Chicken's take, take on, 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 on Donkey Kong is hilarious. <laughs> I could watch. Documentary on, on the, it's called the King of Kongs. Yes, Kong. I've watched that. I've actually watched that. It, it is, is awesome. awesome. It is quite awesome. 
I'm sorry. I probably should mention that I'm a whiskey loving, beer loving gamer chick, so we're good. Hey, what? <laughs> so you need to get to a gamer channel, too. <laughs> like, oh my god. I remember when. Um... What did you just say, Poopy? I remember when um, all the games came out, and I remember when <sighs> they started the poker online on Xbox. I got so addicted to that. Like, I would come home, and I would just crack a beer, and I would play poker on Xbox Live like all the tournaments and everything for hours on end. And it was hilarious because I'd be like, in real life, I would be like, I have over $5 million in the bank, like on this fake shit. And in real life, I could be in Vegas right now going, F yeah! <laughs> but no, it was Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is this? I love my girl. <laughs> well, I think you went through a lot of the you. beer stuff tonight, so I probably... If we have anybody watching... There was beer stuff? What was this? It was, it was a while ago. Oh. <laughs> we was at the point where the beer stuff was yesterday. I think there was beer stuff, on maybe. The, on the East Coast. And then, like, I think I think a guy named Paul showed up for a little bit. Jean, I, th I think that was a long time ago. Now. Yeah. I wanted to get here while Jean was still here so I could make fun of him for saying he was leaving and then staying for, like, an hour. <laughs> Jean's not that's, a quitter. That's usually what Jay does when he's on here. <laughs> Jay does a lot of things when he's on here. <laughs> he says, no, really, I'm leaving this time. Mm-hmm. But thanks for everybody joining in and watching around YouTube world, I guess. Anybody got any final thoughts? Well, I have lots of thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom thoughts. <laughs> any words or wisdoms to impart on people that, man, if they watch it to this point, they are troopers. <laughs> or stupid. One of the two. Oh, Not really yeah. sure. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't know who watches this, but um all I know is I'm probably officially a fan of the CIA, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know if I'm on a CIA list yet, they watch my stuff, but Right, they, like you know, enjoy that. I don't know if they would tell me if I was. Can you they share may, they may watch me on Facebook a little bit. Can but. you share it to this <laughs> way on Facebook? <laughs> right. But I just call it like I see it. You know what's funny is, is I call it fake book or face fuck. <laughs> well, one of those there might are, not be as bad as the other, I guess. Yeah, but like, <laughs> right, like there's so many people that are like, dear diary, and I'm like, no, it's Facebook. Quit posting all of your fucking life trauma shit ever and bitching about your spouse 364 days a year, and then when your anniversary comes, oh my god, I'm married to my best friend! Fuck you. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm sitting here watching the shit show unfold, and I know your child's entire routine, all their allergies, <laughs> and when they go to and from school, and when they're home alone. <laughs> Thank you, pedophile motherfucker ever. <sighs> Speaking of pedophile, they get the third rated, third rank. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that earlier, the third rank. Uh, did you segue into exactly. pedophiles? <laughs> he actually right, right, did. Right. <laughs> You kept it asking for a segue all night. Like, Joe. Now you got a list of all night. The my, my segue person. I had in mind at all. Right, right. Like, look, look, look here you go. Here, here you go. Here it is. Here's a, child, here's a list of all my child's allergies, his favorite foods, his favorite hang places, his entire school schedule, what I pack him for lunch every day, when he's home alone every day. And then, yeah, there you go. Why don't you just offer him up to Satan at this point? Like, I don't even know where that was going. Parents just kill me. How? It's like, 
parents just tell me, they're like, oh, I reproduced this, so it's the greatest thing ever. Well, why are you sharing it with every pedophile in your 10-mile radius and beyond? Because if you didn't privatize your account, now, there you go. <laughs> but on the pedophile. <laughs> no, no, not on the pedophiles, Rod. No, but not. <laughs> I, know, oh, I don't know right? if it was a full, right? I don't know if it was a full pedophile <laughs> or just a sexual assault. Like but here, here but the third the ranking cardinal to the Pope just got like booked on charges. Song. Because I know now. Like, uh, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Don has done with her story. <laughs> like, thanks for that. But it's the third ranking cardinal of the Pope. Right, exactly. On, on oh my targets, God, have you watched on, the keepers? Like the targets, keepers. Like, as, first of all, if you didn't realize that a lot of religions are just solely monetary and what they can get from you, and you have to give so much percentage to them and donations all of your damn life. Here, let's on add on to the fact that since the since 1969, we were aware of specific abuse transferred an abuser to another place, and then, oh, now we have murder, some murders, and let's add on, and now you have, like, the highest ranking official in your fucking, the highest ranking, you know, cardinal. Oh, now we're gonna send you back to, to Australia for justice. Yeah, yeah they Australia. sit around and try to quash, they card. sit around and try to quash, like, oh, here you go. Um, here you go. Um, we're gonna we're gonna totally quash victims' abuse rights because there should be a statute of limitations from when you were raped, regardless if you're a boy or a girl. Well, good for you, but here's the thing: all these fuckers need to remember when you do shit wrong in the name of God, He holds that against you. Don't be afraid of standing against me. Be afraid against standing against the maker because he's the one who's gonna really 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 make sure that the devil ass rapes you a hundred fucking thousand times over like you did everybody else for eternity bitch for eternity <laughs> uh, what can we segue that into um, to the end of the show <laughs> i don't know if you have a hard on from that there might be an issue i'm just <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of issues. You may be slightly demented if there's a little bit of a if, if you if you I'm feel a slight erection, now. you might want to flick it. <laughs> <laughs> Rod's like, I hate you. <laughs> I'm just you know, it's, uh... We have lost all like seven viewers in the last five minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I'm demented. Now, now you're lying. There's not been seven viewers all night. I am really looking forward no, to No, there at one point there was seven viewers. I don't know if it's the last five minutes, but we had seven oh, at one point. <laughs> I'm just saying, most, most religions, not. just like, most religions, just like insurances, oh, are a conglomerate. They're, they're sitting on tons of riches and old scrolls and artifacts and everything else, but yet you have to give at least a percentage of your life to them. To me... And it's a tax-free thing. To me, it's... Look, I'm not saying I don't believe in a God, but I'm not going to tell anybody that their God is less than mine, and I'm not going to tell anybody that what they believe in is less than mine, and I'm not going to tell a Jewish, a Sikh, a Muslim, a Hindu that their religion is any more credible than mine because, let's face it, religion has been based since the dawn of man. And we have believed in some pretty stupid and primitive stuff. Oh my god, the sea swallowing the sun! Will it come up tomorrow? Okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think Donna got one of the, I think Donna got one of the baby people. Or exactly. Nope. <laughs> Brad's like, I love this doll. He didn't shut us off. No, he did. It's he still, forgot to shut us off before he went. As live as live can be, there is a thumbs down from the wild appearing on his chat. Things are going haywire. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like, we cannot sit around and 
you know, you can believe in a creator as much as you want. You can believe in the fact that we are all made in everything on this planet. Well, isn't that, isn't that funny? After last Donna's last thing, Google kicked me out. <laughs> I wonder why. I credit the rock go. But here's the thing, like, we are all, we are all, and every material <laughs> is are watching you. We are, we are all made from the same material as the stars and the moon and the I universes that we try to explore. I got, I got kicked and out at the it, same time I got a thumbs down. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it kills me that 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 people don't watching, even get you, uh, you, people watching. don't even get the fact of the fact that we are all related and we are all made from the same shit regardless of religion or race or whatever or sex people don't even want to think about that they want to be they want to be right they want to be superior they want to listen to react and not to understand <laughs> Well, Truthfully. On that note, don't go chasing waterfalls. And so wait, a, a milkshake reference and then a TLC reference. What is happening? <laughs> right? Don't Ron, is this is nineteen ninety five. What is happening? Waterfalls. I'm just trying to give it a little segue there. And <laughs> I approve. The best segue. The only segue of the night. <laughs> I don't come up with it in my mind. How do I get over? <laughs> What are you trying to say? That there's a huge difference between a man's double D's and a woman's double D's? I'm just trying to... Yeah, mine are hairy. Hopefully yours aren't. <laughs> no, mine aren't. But thank there you. you. <laughs> not only not hairy, but bump-free. Imagine that. <laughs> now I got two thumbs down. <laughs> you guys are killing me. Uh, I believe there's three of them now, so what I mean. <laughs> Look, if people Go can't take it. a joke, seriously, if you can't take a joke, Go cry into a barrel and drink your own tears. <laughs> <laughs> Don't eat the yellow snow. <laughs> exactly. Zappa. Exactly. If you've never tried yeah, it before, no I'm not it. saying try it, but I'm saying at least try two people it. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple there's two people watching because they weren't there before. Oh, we, we all went to the viewers. Man, Nick, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen that. Strictly yeah. commercial, la la la. I think one of your thumbs down may have been my my significant other. Um, hell, is she watching? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not cause distress. <laughs> I think. Seriously, I'm pretty sure I'm the only female in this group, but I don't think it's a reason to be threatened. It's not like I'm sitting there going, hi, I'm beer and boobs or vagina and butthole. Hello. No. <laughs> I'll usually that. Yeah, that is and I'm not doing that. Welcome and I'm, I'm completely clothed and covered and... I've been actually. I, I, have, I found besides my Besides being a mouthy bitch, I'm probably a pretty decent person. Who are you saying, Albino? I, I was saying, I was hoping Paul was here tonight because I finally found the picture of me doing bad things to his car <laughs> when it was in my garage for those six months. Well, yeah. that's fucked up. That means me, man. I didn't know what to say. That's the world is fucked up. Just that. Don't fall that specifically that is really fucked up. That specifically is really fucked up. <laughs> so well, that's that's all said, thanks watching. for everybody that's I know we, I know people there. describe things as jacked up, but what level of jacked up? Is there a specific oh, God, odometer? Like... Is there a specific number ratio of jacked up or <laughs> fucked off? Let's 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 talk about that. Let's talk about a specific yeah. number Ma of jacked up or fucked off. Shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> I, I have Ma idea. Maybe I have after idea. we go off. Thanks for everybody. Right, everybody. <laughs> like I said, you never know what's going to happen on this show, so <laughs> you don't. I, I, I have no idea what is jacked up. It, it every every time talking. Is people. You know, Rod. Yeah, right. I, I used to not believe what you said, but now I'm totally a believer. <laughs> oh, oh, what? <laughs> you don't know what you're going to get. Ever. Oh, 
Oh, come oh, on. Don't, don't be a force. You, you have don't be a force. Tom, take off his shirt. I'm don't trying to fight Jay. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> And if you like nougat or not, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you like nuts, sometimes you don't. Anyway. Right? Like again. almond joy or mounds. <laughs> oh, mounds doesn't sound healthy, though, I'm does it? I mean, the mounds, that. I'm not mounds. Every Thursday night, it gets a little crazy. Tonight might have been a little crazier. I don't know, but you have to check it out each week. Like I said, when we get the trifecta or the, uh, what is it with the, Crossover. Oh, we get Lord. Donna, Paul, and Tom together. That's going to be one you're going to want to catch. Oh no! <laughs> so with that, I'll be all your thumbs down for then. Bye, <laughs> and we'll throw in a little J possibly too, so it'll really be crazy. <laughs> but thanks again for everybody watching. You guys want to still hang out? We'll have a little overtime. Oh my God! So like. Cool. Okay, so this is my first hangout. What you're telling me is that random strangers are watching my Bye, total. Mm -hmm. Not my, anymore. My, my, my total. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't care be. If I, here's you the be best be part anymore. is that you're talking to the zero shits given and zero fucks girl. So if they don't like what I'm saying, then they need to adjust what they're thinking because all I'm saying is that. You will not treat me like a second-class citizen, and I know good beer. Boom. <laughs> so, when it's all said and done, you can watch this tomorrow because it's all recorded. Yeah. So oh my God! Drop it's the, the mic best. and walk away. It's the best. I can, only the hope, I can only hope Spicy Baby and everybody the with their yeah, with their bullshit watches night. and learn something. Like, That's all I can I say. Like, I feel like Roger needs to give and walk away. Kind of Roger needs to give out some kind of present, pre some kind of present if they win or some award if they watch all like three and a half hours of this. Right? <laughs> like I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure that um I would rather try to outswim a great white shark for a Shark Week than deal with all the stupidity that's going on in the world. <laughs> Like and, and 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 I'm not even the greatest swimmer, and I'm just gonna say that out loud. <laughs> hey, look how drunk it was! I'll drink today. You'll drink anything, drunken one. That's why you named drunken one. <laughs> look, this is my favorite. This would be my favorite if people could yeah, actually comment on those. these things and just like hit a little toasties button, and like a little the little programmer would pop up from Ultimate Mortal Kombat three and just be like. Toasties! <laughs> and, and with that, we're out. Wow.